These battles of October have all the makings of another classic, the Fall Classic, a time when every pitch, every swing gives you goosebumps. Jack Morris was continuing his classic World Series form, but these Braves always seem to have a secret weapon. And on this night, the weapon was Damon Berryhill. So tonight, the confrontations continue. David Cohn for the Blue Jays, John Smoltz for the Braves. Two pitchers with big guns as the battles of October continue. Fulton County Stadium, there's a statue of the greatest brave of them all, Henry Aaron. And inside, they pay tribute to the other legendary braves of the past, Warren Spahn, Eddie Matthews, and Phil Negro. This year, the Braves have an assortment of unlikely heroes. There was Francisco Cabrera coming off the bench to win game seven of the NLCS. What a moment that was. And last night, Another backup catcher, Damon Berryhill, stepped up to the plate to win game one of the World Series. And as the jubilant crowd packs into this downtown ballpark, you can sense that they're expecting another miracle. And in fact, the only question on their minds is who will provide it tonight? The South has risen and Atlanta claimed game one, but they call this the World Series, not the World Game. And Toronto would be more than happy to earn a split in the home of the Braves before we all split for north of the border. So coming up, the Toronto Blue Jays and the Atlanta Braves, it's game two of the 1992 World Series here on CBS. Hi again, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien. Welcome to CBS Sports' continuing coverage of the 1992 World Series. You know, we spoke about the moving past of the Braves. The franchise began in Boston there they split two World Series before heading west to become the Milwaukee Braves, where in the late 50s, they again split two World Series before moving south. Last year, Atlanta lost in seven. Now they're up a game. And yes, in case you're wondering, they are planning to move again eventually to Olympic Stadium, which hasn't been built yet here in Atlanta. Well, once again, uh, Jim Cott joins us. And Kitty, the Toronto Blue Jays have been in this spot before, haven't they? Well, the Blue Jays lost game one of the American League Championship Series in dramatic form. Harold Baines hit the home run in that one. Psychologically, it will not be a factor. This is a very loose veteran ball club, and when you look at their record this entire season, they have never been swept in a series, not even a short two-gamer like this one. Let's talk a moment about the keys for tonight's game, too. Well, I think for Toronto at the top of the lineup, Devon White and Roberto Alomar will now hit from the left side. They're a better one-two punch when they hit left-handed. And important, I think, because to get on against John Smoltz and get the running game going, something that's important to Toronto, you don't figure to hit a lot of home runs against Smoltz. Kitty's had his reporter's hat on all day. Any changes in the Toronto lineup? John Olerud will play first base and bat fifth. That means Joe Carter will go to left field and Candy Maldonado will sit this one out. What's Bobby Cox going to do tonight for the Braves? Well, he'll make a change. Deion Sanders is going to bat second. He'll be at the top of that Braves lineup, and I think that's equally important. For Atlanta to get the running game going, uh, David Cohn, very easy to steal against. Here in Atlanta, they kind of play a nightly game here. Uh, pick tonight's hero. It's your turn. Well, it was Cabrera, Barry Hill. I guess it would be logical if you're a Braves fan to assume that with Deion Sanders in the lineup, he'd be tonight's hero. That's why he's there. Deion uh, is batting 600 against David Cohn. In fact, earlier this year, Deion took David Cohn downtown. That ball is well hit. That ball is good. Number seven for Dia. 
I usually have pretty good success with against Cone, and I hope to continue success. Yeah. A little nervous? Feel good about this? No, oh, this, this is your is, little prime time for you, There's huh? nothing to be nervous about. I want to go out there and help these guys win. Been a lot of talk about Deion Sanders in the last couple of weeks. How good is Deion as a baseball player? Well, the progress he's made in the last four years is amazing as a hitter, and, and the best is still ahead for Deion. So if he applies himself, I think he could be a terrific baseball player. Kitty, uh, last night's game could have gone either way, but for one swing of Barry Hill's bat, Jack Morris appeared to be cruising, and then suddenly they were hitting him. What happened to Jack? Well, not making an excuse, but Jack Morris was having difficulty feeling the ball. It was a cool night. In fact, it's going to be a lot colder tonight. And with that fork ball, it was slipping out of his hand from time to time. That one never got below the belt. It was really the only bad pitch he made the entire night. And on the other hand, Tom Glavin, from the start of the game, it was obvious that it was going to be a pitcher strike zone. Jerry Crawford was very consistent. Anything low and away, and Glavin was able to pitch to that, be consistent, and get a lot of ground ball outs. 54 degrees tonight, a little yeah. cool tonight. The Aces of uh, the Atlanta staff, uh, I found out on Thursday, for them, the pressure of pitching in a World Series is now par for the course. Speaking of which, I joined them for their appointed rounds as they tried to work their way into the swing of things. Tonight's starter, John Smoltz, like is a big a hitter in terms of golf, which he says helps him relax. All right, that's a birdie from there. <laughs> Who would win, I wonder, the Blue Jays or the uh, or the Braves in a golf tournament? You know if those guys can play golf? I wouldn't say they get a chance to play too much being too cold up there, so I'd like our chance. Hey, you're ripping the city already. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start that already. It's 35 degrees uh, in Toronto tonight where we're heading tomorrow. He hits the ball hard on the golf course. I was with him one day when he outdrove Mark Kalkovecki, and in fact, he shot two under par that day at an exhibition match last spring in West Palm Beach. Hit a little better than me, I'll tell you that. <laughs> we come back, uh, we'll relive David Cohn's worst nightmare, and we'll share John Smoltz's biggest pain in the neck. As Baseball 92 rolls on from Peachtree Plaza to Maple Leaf Gardens here on CBS. CBS Sports coverage of Game 2 of the 1992 World Series is brought to you by Michelin. Because so much is riding on your tires. so special it may last as long as you own your car the xh4 congratulations it's a michelin backed by an 80,000 mile treadwear limited warranty michelin because so much is riding on your tires here's relka seltzer plus fights tough colds with tough congestion tough aches tough sore throat this is why you need a tough medicine, Alka-Seltzer Plus Cold Medicine. The leading cold pill only relieves congestion, but Alka-Seltzer Plus relieves congestion, sore throat, headache, body aches. That's tough medicine. You bet it's tough. Alka-Seltzer Plus Cold Medicine. It's tough medicine. For a cold with a cough, try Alka-Seltzer Plus Cold and Cough Medicine. Rockport has combined the lightweight comfort of its walking shoe with the rugged performance of its hiking boot. The Discovery Series by Rockport. It wasn't as easy as it looks. With Rockport, you should be in our shoes. I can't remember. It was something, something. Nicoderm. Nicotine transdermal system. Yeah, it's called Nicoderm. Yeah, yeah, the patch. Nicoderm, huh? Yeah, it's a patch. Nicoderm, derm, derm. By prescription only. Can Wood survive a camp out with the kids? I'm trying to teach the kids how the Indians made it. If I was an Indian about now, when I'd be using my lighter. Evening shade at a special time, Monday. Welcome back. Here's David Cohn arriving at a familiar place, Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. It was here two years ago that the then New York Mets starter got caught up in this bizarre scenario. Breaking ball, grounder. Marshall lets Jeffries get it, toss the cone, he tags the bag. And they say safe. Watch the runner. He's not watching the runner. The runner scores. And Cone's still arguing. Here comes the second runner. The second runner scores. I believe I just saw that. Far from his mind right now, I'm sure, as you look at a live picture of David Cone uh, getting ready to start in his first World Series game. Had 261 strikeouts, leading the majors for the third consecutive year. Three record against Atlanta, 9-3. The 2.68 ERA. By the way, that game we talked about, that's the only game he's ever lost here. He's 4-1 here. 
as he warms up tonight. We asked his manager, Cito Gaston, if Cone has the advantage knowing the Braves hitters, or is it the other way around? Uh, if there's any, any advantage at all, it's probably for them because they have seen him before. Where you know we haven't seen this kid tonight, Smokes. We haven't seen him at all, and uh, in fact, we haven't seen any of their pitchers. Right. So uh, they have seen Jack Morris before, which you know they seen him last night. Tonight they'll see David Cone. But if, you know if David's on, uh, it doesn't matter who sees him. David Cohen just right out behind us here, uh, Kitty. What do you think of this big gun? Well, he short-circuited a little bit in that game against uh, Atlanta. He He's got better control of his emotions right now and also better control of his pitches. A great slider against right-hand hitters. I don't care how many times you hit against him. If he has his stuff together, one of the toughest pitchers in baseball to hit, a great split-finger fastball that he uses against lefties. He has not had a good one in his last two starts. He better have one tonight with four left-hand hitters in Atlanta's lineup. Indeed. John Smoltz is back, and, well, uh, so is his back. We always talk about those adjustments pitchers have to make. Well, on game days and sometimes in between, John Smoltz is no exception. Felt that here as Smoltz get loose to, gets loose tonight. A reminder that he's pitching on three days rest. He's been effective in this situation before, and I asked him about it earlier tonight. And mentally, I, I enjoy pitching his last three uh, times out. Um, I think the only thing I could say is it's less time to prepare and more time to uh, get the ball and do what I enjoy doing, and that's pitching. Got to know him a little bit. A lot of confidence in that kid. Yeah, I, it, I like his attitude. It's laughable this three days rest thing. You'll have a little less power, much better control, and. Of course, John Smoltz has been very effective on short rest in postseason play. Braves hope he is tonight. Great assortment of pitches. He has added a split finger since in the last couple of years. Live picture of him there warming up before game two of the World Series. You know, the beauty of this game is that every play stirs memories of the past. as we take one last look at the reaction to Damon Berryhill's big surprise we're reminded of the great yogiism it's like deja vu all over again and as he left the ballpark this morning it must have been deja vu for another backup catcher who had his moment 20 years ago two down George Hendrick at first top of the second there's a long blast to deep left that one is going and it is good Gene Tennis in his first World Series game actually lashed two home runs for Oakland swing and A's as baseball irony would have it, he's now a Toronto coach. What happened last night, you know, uh, is a lot of similarities with uh, Barry Hill coming in 20 years later. I hope he doesn't stay as hot as I did. <laughs> Fury Tenace. Boy, talk about hot. The Reds didn't know a lot about him. They gave him a lot of inside fastballs. He hit four home runs in that series. He was on the world champion A's in, in 72, the world champion Cardinals at 82, and he's hoping he gets a ring here in the 90s with the Blue Jays in 92. Tenace, anybody? Oh, sorry, it's a bad joke. <laughs> Baseball 92 will continue live from Hotlanta in a moment. Sorry about that. Stay with us. When life turns up the heat. Can they start the wedding without me? This shouldn't take long, honey. Nothing protects you like Degree Antiperspirant. It's body heat activated to release extra protection. Degree, your body <laughs> heat turns it on. <laughs> Car, it needs a brake job. Just my luck. My dealer makes appointments, so I'm stuck. You've got to take your car to Midas when your brakes go bad. Now is just the perfect time, so stop feeling sad. Get great brake, brake values value at Midas brake. today. I'll get the cereal, honey. Warning! You'll love this cereal. Where'd you come from? A different time when grains were kept whole for the natural hearty taste. Great grains. Toasted wheat, oats, and barley kept whole. All of flavor. Pecans, dates, raisins. Enjoy it with the missus. Thanks. Mmm, great. Where'd you get this? <laughs> Mind if I tell her? What was great back then is great grains now. A great cereal from Post. The temperature never drops below Xerox. That's very important to remember, especially at a time like this, when it's very deserted and very cold. Ah, you did remember Xerox antifreeze. The temperature never drops below Xerox. 
Contact wrote a book on cold medicine, then added this chapter. Contact day and night. Day caplets for non-drowsy cold relief. Night caplets to relieve your symptoms to let you rest. Contact day and night. Another important chapter in cold relief. She's not dead. He's on a search for his wife. My God, there she is, Cameron! Someone has kidnapped their daughter. She belongs in jail now! And she... You're crazy! ...is living in a nightmare. Missing persons, a few surprises. Knott's Landing premiere after the World Series. Back live at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium as the pitchers are getting uh, ready for tonight's uh, contest. And Kitty, what's going through their minds right now? Well, the uh, the butterflies and the cotton mouth, the dry mouth, that's all back in the clubhouse. And through John Smoltz's mind right now, I think, get a little feel of the ball. You'll see these guys blowing on their hand tonight. It's a little chilly. I think the early part of the warm-up, you get a feel of the ball, get the arm loose. And then about the last five minutes, he's heating it up right now. You kind of go through the other team's lineup on an imaginary at bat, low and away, high and tight, work all your pitches in. The Braves fans are hoping it will be another raining night in Georgia. We'll be back to sing Oh Canada and the Star Spangled Banner with you after a word from your local station. The fans here are getting ready for game two of the World Series. Stay with us. Monday, special guest Adam Ann stumbles into Sicily, and guess who might never be the same? Uh, She's under some sort of spell. Mm. Northern Exposure, Monday. Mm. This is CBS. You've been hearing a lot of noise about long distance. And while no one takes you to more places than AT&T, did you know this? Place for place, Europe, Asia, South America, everywhere, we give you competitive prices. In fact, the difference between AT&T and other major long-distance companies is no more than a penny. So now that price isn't the real issue, what should you think about? Remember service? Bye. Quality? Look at the big picture. Why do people really like Toyota Paseo? Take this home lie detector test. I like Paseo because A, it's practical, mm -hmm. has a driver's side airbag, mm -hmm. or B, women dig it. Mm -hmm. A, it has a 100 horsepower performance, mm -hmm. or B, women dig it. Mm -hmm. A, Paseo starts under $11,500, or B, mm -hmm. women dig it. Paseo, a very practical car from Toyota. The seven-year-old boy was reported missing a little over three days ago. Kidnapping was suspected at first, but the family says that the child wandered away and got separated. Hey, Connie, from what you doing? Yeah, well, quick, turn on Action News. You know that little boy they've been looking for? Yeah, the one from down the street. They found him. When news breaks, we've got cameras at the scene and the gutsy reporting you need. Quick, turn on Action News. Action News, the one on two. Don't miss 60 Minutes, tonight on Channel 2. Welcome back, and time now to honor America and to honor Canada. And once again, to do the honors of introducing tonight's guest artists, here is public address announcer, Marshall Mann. Now to honor Canada, join in the singing of the Canadian anthem, which will be performed tonight by Capitol Platinum recording artist and native of Canada, Tom Cochran, whose hit, Life is a Highway, topped the charts this summer. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all our sons come in. With glowing hearts we see thee rights, the true nor strong and free. Oh, Canada, we stand on God, we stand on God for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. Oh, Canada, we stand on God for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on God for thee. And now to honor America. Join in the singing of our national anthem, which will be performed by Columbia recording artist, Peebo Bryson. Oh, 
say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming the broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets regular the bombs bursting in air That our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spang go then again away or the land? We liked it too. On deck, game two of the 1992 World Series. Stay with us. CBS Sports coverage of game two of the 1992 World Series is brought to you by Lexus Luxury Automobiles, including the newly redesigned 1993 LS400. Bud Light, if you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. And by Burger King, where you can get it your way right away at Burger King now. In Europe, things happen on time, right on schedule. Punctuality is the norm, and that makes Europe the ideal environment for UPS. Fact is, UPS has built the most comprehensive delivery network in Europe. So when you have a shipment going there that has to be on time, use the delivery company whose punctuality is a time-honored tradition. UPS, we run the tightest ship in Europe. He said he was never drafted. Then he admitted he was drafted. Then he said he forgot being drafted. He said he was never deferred from the draft. Then he said he was. He said he never received special treatment, but he did receive special treatment. The question then was avoiding the draft. Now for Bill Clinton, it's a question of avoiding the truth. Sam here is giving me enough good reasons to use my Dirt Devil hand vac, but now he's giving me five more. When they turn the house upside down, I turn on my Dirt Devil. Its powerful revolving brush tears into dirt, chews up crumbs, and picks up pet hair. It has an extra long cord, and it's lightweight. So, I'd say my Dirt Devil is the pick of the litter. Right, Sam? <laughs> right. Get a Dirt Devil and put the power of an upright in the palm of your hand. Introducing Viennese Chocolate Cafe. Rich, creamy tasting coffee with a touch of luscious chocolate. So magical, it could inspire a waltz. New Viennese Chocolate Cafe. It's coming October 29th. And it will change the way you feel about everything you see. From Sony. Well, the stage is set now for the second act of the Fall Classic. The scenario couldn't be any greater. Green grass, red Georgia clay, and clear skies. The players are among the most talented on the continent. And all that remains is to introduce the men who will narrate this drama as it unfolds tonight. Sean McDonough and Tim McCarver. And gentlemen, the two sweetest words in anybody's vocabulary, play ball. Thank you, Pat. Those are sweet words indeed. And in recent World Series play, the sweetest words of all have been home field. With Atlanta's victory last night, the home team has now won 25 of the last 31 World Series games, including the last eight in a row. So tonight, the Toronto Blue Jays look to end that streak and pull even in this series 
as they send David Cohn out to the mound to make his first ever World Series appearance against John Smoltz. It is clearly the story tonight, a marvelous matchup of two power pitchers. David Cohn leading the major leagues in strikeouts for the third consecutive year, and John Smoltz leading the National League in strikeouts with 215. It's interesting that both pitchers are remarkably similar. They throw very hard, high fastballs, devastating sliders, as Jim Cott said earlier, and both with very, very good splitters. So look for the hitters to lay off of those pitches. The big difference is in David Cohn's inability to hold runners close. He gave up more stolen bases than any other pitcher in the big leagues this year. Each team with a significant lineup change tonight for the Atlanta Braves. Deion Sanders gets the start in left field. He's starting for just the third time in the last 42 Atlanta games. And even though Bobby Cox is making only one defensive change, he's making really two offensive change because changes because Jeff Blauser, who normally hits second, moves into the sixth hole for Deion Sanders. Ron Gann, incidentally, 0 for his last 14, and Jeff Blauser 0 for 11. I think it's the right move to make. And for Toronto tonight, John Olderud is in the lineup at first base. And he's their normal first baseman. Joe Carter moves to left field. I do think, however, that the Atlanta Braves will continue to try to take advantage of the throwing arm of Dave Winfield. He's only been out there on defense 26 times this year. Candy Maldonado, the odd man out for Toronto tonight. He's not an odd man, and he's in our lineup. Here's Jim Cott. <laughs> Well, I think one of the factors tonight is really going to be the weather. It, we talked about how cool it was last night. You're going to see the pitchers blowing on that hand, trying to get some moisture there to grip the ball, and not only gripping the ball, but I think the winds are a little stronger tonight, and if they get a few pitches up, we may even see some more home runs today. We saw a couple last night that decided the game, even against a couple of great pitchers like Cone and Smoltz. Sean? Thank you, Kitty. As you might expect, another sellout crowd of better than 51,000 on hand at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. Ready for game two of the 1992 World Series. The Braves lead one game to none. The starting lineup tonight for the Toronto Blue Jays. Devon White leads off in center field. Roberto Alomar is the second baseman. Batting third and in left field tonight, Joe Carter. The cleanup hitter, right fielder, Dave Winfield. John Olerud at first base batting fifth. Batting sixth, the third baseman, Kelly Gruber. Pat Borders is behind the plate hitting seventh. The shortstop, Manuel Lee, bats eighth. And batting ninth, the pitcher, David Cohn. And the fans back on their feet as the Atlanta Braves take the field. allow us to show you the defense for the Atlanta Braves. Deion Sanders in left field. Otis Nixon in center field. So a lot of speed in the outfield with David Justice in right. The third baseman this evening will be last year's most valuable player in the National League, Terry Pendleton. Jeff Blauser, the shortstop. Mark Lemke, whom Bobby Cox says turns the double play equally as well as Bill Mazarowski. How about that for company? Sid Bream, the first baseman, and last night's hero, Damon Berryhill, behind the plate. John Smoltz, 4-0 and in postseason, 2-0 and this year in the league championship series. And while he did not have a decision last year in the World Series against Minnesota, he did pitch very well working two games 14 and a third innings and giving up only two runs striking out 11 and walking only one Smoltz with a lot of experience in big game situations despite the fact that he is just 25 years old in each of the last seven World Series the team that has won game one has also won game two so that recent history is on the side of the Atlanta Braves tonight as well. We mentioned John Smoltz experience in big game situations and prior to this start we asked him about that. I've always believed as a kid that, that these are the games that I've actually loved to pitch in. I don't look at them as total pressure situations, not life or death. I just enjoy it and I'm fulfilling a, 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 a kid's dream and 
I think that approach really helps me relax and go out and do the things that I'm capable of. And he's capable of quite a bit, as the numbers indicate. He was the most valuable player in the LCS against Pittsburgh. And by winning that award, he earned himself a $50,000 bonus as an incentive clause in his contract. The umpires working the ball game tonight behind the plate Mike Riley of the American League Joe West from the National League at first base the American League's Dan Morrison at second Bob Davidson at third John Shulock in left field and Jerry Crawford last night's home plate umpire has the right field line for Mike Riley this is his second World Series appearance he's been a major league umpire for 15 years in the last game of last year's American League Championship Series Mike Riley ran Cito Gaston we talked to Cito about it before he said uh, that's uh, that was done last year and no problem with Mike Riley a very fair umpire and a good umpire and he'll be behind the plate tonight and for the casual baseball fan when you say he ran Cito Gaston you don't mean that he put him through laps in the outfield before or after the game nor used him as a pinch runner that's right no. you mean that he ejected him that is from correct. the ball game. <laughs> That was in the second inning of the game of which you were speaking for arguing balls and strikes. The next three games in this series will be played at the Sky Dome in Toronto. Game three comes your way Tuesday night with the first pitch at 829. Also night games on Wednesday and Thursday. If games six and seven are necessary, they would be played back here in Atlanta. Smoltz is ready and the crowd is ready as well. And the first batter of game two is Devon White. He was 0 for 4 last night after a 348 batting average in the American League Championship Series. Big part of Tom Glavin's success last night was keeping the top two hitters in the Toronto batting order off the bases. White and Alomar went a combined 0 for 8. First pitch of game two. A fastball then for strike one. As a matter of fact, White nor Alomar got a ball out of the infield last night. And the breaking ball swung on and missed. Smoltz quickly ahead 0 and 2. Time he laid off the breaking ball. One ball and two strikes. This is what we were talking about in last night's game against Tom Glavin. Devon White 0 for 4. Roberto Alomar 0 for 4. That's especially noteworthy because of the kind of production that Toronto has had from White and Alomar in its 11 championship series games over the last two years. They're off to a similar start tonight as White struck out on the pitch high and tight. The breaking ball again to Devon White gets him. It's not a good breaking ball either. It stays up in the strike zone. A high curve ball waved at by White. Now Roberto Alomar. Bounced back to the mound and a hop. And Smoltz throws him out. Saw the flags in the hat of the fan. This series has taken on somewhat nationalistic tones. Yesterday, the headline on the special section in the Atlanta newspaper that focused exclusively on the World Series was, This is our game. Joe Carter, the batter. He provided the Blue Jays with their only run last night with a home run in the fourth inning off Tom Glavin. Breaking ball, swung on and missed for strike one. The Braves' right-handed pitchers will pitch Joe Carter and Dave Winfield the same way. They'll try to get him out inside, even though that pitch was away. Not all pitchers 
get hitters out the same way. Last night, Joe Carter hit a home run off Tommy Glavin trying to come inside to him. John Smoltz with various ways to get a hitter out. Including the strikeout with the breaking ball. One, two, three, go the Blue Jays. Two strikeouts in the inning for John Smoltz. My voice has been pre-recorded to demonstrate a remarkable point. A car phone so well conceived, it's not only portable, but voice activated. Now, dialing's as easy as this. Call office. Thank you for calling Lexus. May I help you? What will it be, Phyllis? Make it a Bud Light. Sorry. This is the last one. Well, I think I've been well, to I'll take that one. What do you want to give? Four and I'm a two and a ten. Give me ten and a twenty big. Give me twenty now, thirty. Give me thirty now, forty big. Give me forty now, fifty. Give me fifty now, sixty big. Give me sixty now, seventy. Give me seventy now. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Bud Light, please. Sorry, boys. This is the last one. High performance cars. Luxury performance cars. Family cars. If you've got the car, we've got the tire. Michelin. Because so much is riding on your tires. Monday, what's up with Miles Hell? I'm 30 years old and a French fry could kill me! He's just sitting up there calculating his body fat. It's Murphy Brown. Then, who you look good. Wally's dressing up for Jack. Just want to take a deep breath and let my stomach out. Let me ask you, are you getting enough circulation? And all new love and more after Murphy Brown Monday. Center fielder Otis Nixon leads off for the Atlanta Braves tonight. Deion Sanders gets his first postseason start in left field. Terry Pendleton, the third baseman, batting third. The cleanup hitter, right fielder David Justice. Sid Bream batting fifth at first base. The shortstop, Jeff Blauser, batting sixth tonight. Damon Berryhill, last night's hero, is catching and batting seventh. Mark Lemke, the second baseman, hits eighth and batting ninth. The pitcher, John Smoltz. The defense for the Toronto Blue Jays. Joe Carter will play left field for the seventh time this year. Devon White, an excellent center fielder, and Dave Winfield, primarily a designated hitter this year, is in right field. Kelly Gruber, a terrific third baseman. Manny Lee, a good shortstop. Roberto Alomar, tremendous range on the right side. John Olerud is the first baseman, and Pat Borders behind the plate. We mentioned how many ways John Smoltz had to get you out, and uh, David Cohn is similar. Fastball that he throws upstairs, it's got a little tailing motion to it. John Smoltz is a cross seamer. His has a tendency to rise. Cone's a tendency to tail. But David Cohn, along with Smoltz, has a good slider. Probably his best pitch at this time. And as Jim Cott said earlier in our pregame, uh, Cone had a tough time getting the split finger fastball over in the LCS. Otis Nixon digs in. No scores. The Braves come up for the first time in game two. Otis started the first inning last night with a single through the middle on the first pitch thrown by Jack Morris. He went one for three. Twenty nine year old David Cohn from Kansas City Missouri. Ready to throw his first ever pitch in World Series play. And it's a strike as Nixon was taking all the way. David Cohn from Kansas City facing Otis Nixon from Evergreen, North Carolina. <laughs> Town of Otis says it's 305 people, but we checked today, and uh, there are 850 people there. It's the small Charles Corral that didn't know where it is. <laughs> and apparently it's growing very quickly <laughs> from 300 to 800. Right. And just a couple of hours. 
Oh and two the count on Nixon. Fastball just inside. David Wells one of the cone heads in the Toronto dugout. Field, charging hard Carter to make the catch. I think the fact that David Wells was wearing the cone head is indicative of the fact that David Cohn quickly came to be well received by his new teammates. He's a very likable guy and really fit in with relative ease. Traded uh, for two organizational players on August 27th, and it's baseball's uh, version of the Lynn Lease plan. <laughs> Even though Toronto has first dibs on Cohn after the season, he will, in all probability, declare free agency. Deion Sanders takes his first World Series pitch ever to deep right field. Winfield to the wall to make the catch. Sanders nearly took Cohn out of the ballpark. Dion six for ten lifetime prior to that at bat against David Cohn. This is a slider off the bat of Sanders. It appeared he was looking for the breaking ball and just misses a home run. Winfield against the wall. Wow. And each of the two outfielders has been tested early. Carter had to make a running catch and Winfield to the wall to make the play on Sanders. Sanders owns the best career batting average of any major leaguer against David Cohn. So two down in the bottom of the first, no score in the ball game, and one ball to count on Terry Pendleton. You may have noticed Deion Sanders was limping. He has had a broken bone in his left foot since March. It has not healed properly, and in all probability won't, because from baseball, he'll go right back into football and have about a month off, and then spring training starts next year. Three balls and no strikes on Pendleton, whose woes in the league championship series carried over into the World Series last night when Terry went 0 for 4 in game one. And Cones in with his first strike to Pendleton, who tied for the National League lead in hits during the regular season with Andy Van Slyke of Pittsburgh. They each had 199. Full count now. If Pendleton can keep the inning alive, David Justice would bat next. We saw the numbers for Cone against the Braves. Nine and three lifetime, but as he pointed out, a lot of pitchers ran up impressive records against Atlanta in 1987 and 88. And that's when most of David's damage was done. Lee has to hurry on the move he throws him out by a running step each side goes in order in the first after one inning in game two there is no score Sam here is giving me enough good reasons to use my dirt devil hand vac but now he's giving me five more when they turn the house upside down I turn on my dirt devil it's powerful revolving brush tears into dirt chews up crumbs and picks up pet hair it has an extra long cord and it's lightweight so I'd say my dirt devil is the pick of the litter right Sam <laughs> right get a dirt devil and put the power of an upright in the palm of your hand just a hoot and a holler from Nashville's Grand Old Opry is another place that's home to musicians from all over the world it's Groon Guitars, where they sell rare and vintage instruments to everyone from Johnny Cash to Motley Crue. So if you go, remember, bring your pick and your Visa card. Because at Groon, you can take your licks on a 1939 Martin, but you can't take it home with American Express. Yeah. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Three years ago, when we introduced the Lexus LS400, it was hailed as nearly perfect. Our 
engineers took that as a challenge. Presenting the 1993 LS400, the pursuit continues. Every home run, Major League Baseball are donating $5,000 to build and renovate youth baseball fields all across America. No score after one inning in game two of the 1992 World Series. Each team went in order in the first. John Smoltz is through what he thinks is the most difficult part of the night for himself. He says ordinarily he's too pumped up in the first inning that cost him in game seven of the LCS when the Pirates scored a run that almost stood up to be the game winning run. Dave Winfield takes a fastball for strike one. He was one for three last night with an infield hit. Smoltz struck out two in the first inning. Breaking ball in the dirt. The ball and a strike on Winfield. He will be followed by John Oldrude and Kelly Gruber. All right, John. Winfield played in last night's game at 41 years, 14 days old. The oldest player to participate in the World Series game since the Twins' Joe Negro pitched in 1987 in Game Four at the age of 43. Dave Winfield was a freshman at the University of Minnesota when John Smoltz was born. And an outstanding basketball player as a gopher was Winfield in addition to his baseball exploits. Now the 2 2 pitch struck him out with the breaking ball. Four men have come to the plate for Toronto against John Smoltz and three of them have struck out. And we talked about uh, the Braves scouting report saying their right handers will try to pitch both Carter and Winfield inside. If you have a breaking ball like that I don't care if a guy likes the ball away or not they're not going to hit it. Winfield is vulnerable inside but all good hitters are vulnerable inside because they go into the ball the same with Joe Carter. John Olrude took a ball low and in. He's up for the first time in this World Series. He sat out last night as Joe Carter played first base and Candy Maldonado was in left field. Of course, the maneuvering won't be a problem for Cito Gaston when the series shifts to Toronto for game three and the DH is employed in the American League home ballpark. This is the 20th birthday of the designated hitter. Hard to believe, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it? Really is. From 1973 to 1975, no designated hitter was used in the World Series. From 76 through 85, it was used on even numbered years. And from 1986 on, only in the American League parks. Three balls and a strike on John Olderoo. With well, one out and the base is empty. In the top of the second, there is no score. Jack Morris, the losing pitcher last night for Toronto, his first ever World Series loss. Full count now. That's an indication of how hard both pitchers are throwing on two, three, one counts. We have seen balls foul back the other way. That's when the hitter is looking for the fastball and still fouls it back the other way. Smoltz and Cohn both throwing awfully hard. And the breaking ball freezes Oldrude. 
So after the 92 mile per hour fastball, Olerud caught looking at the breaking ball. Five in a row retired by Smoltz to start the ball game. Four of them via the strikeout. Olerud down on strikes. After fouling back that fastball, come back with that pitch. That's just not fair. Two away for Kelly Gruber, who fouled the first pitch back to the backstop. Gruber 0 for 3 last night, and now 0 for his last 18 in this postseason. An overthrow and a count of one ball and one strike. The all time record for consecutive hitless at bats in a single postseason is 22. Shared by Dal Maxville in the 68 World Series and Dave Winfield in the postseason in 1981. Two balls and a strike on Gruber. Dave Winfield's was a carryover from the League Championship Series to the World Series. Two balls and two strikes. Well, Gruber's been bothered a lot by injuries this year, as we mentioned last night. And when he returned to action late in the season, manager Cito Gaston told him, I really don't care how much you hit. We don't need you to with our lineup. I want you to play great defensive third base. And Cito Gaston thinks Kelly is the best defensive third baseman in the game today. That's what he told us before the game this evening. Trying to strike out the side, he does with the breaking ball again. Six Blue Jays have come to the plate against Smoltz. Five of them have fanned after an inning and a half, no score. Do you want to fly where there are no runways? Do you want to swing? When no one has swung before? Or do you want to surf where there is no ocean? And get yourself a Toyota 4Runner. Because where you're headed, you don't want to be driving anything less. I am the Burger King. I love this place! Dinner. It's a whole new thing, and it's happening at Burger King. Come in. I order the dinner basket thing. I want the dinner basket with the chicken. Oh, I go and get my own drink. Come here. Yes. I can give you popcorn just to chill with. I got the popcorn. Mmm. Right now it's time for table service. I am psyched. Burger King, dinner basket, table service. 30 all in one. Working up the appetite outside of big cake. I'm thinking about the chicken or the shrimp, the steak or the whopper, baked potato or the fries, slaw or the salad. You decide. Chicken. Steak, Whopper, shrimp. So then they bring your food out from four to eight, and they wait on you. All right, what do you think about this whole concept, man? Table service. They bring it right out to you yep. to serve you. It's very good. And he's dipping it, and mm. very good. It's good, isn't it? It's your way, right away. I love this place. Flex. You're down three zip, bottom of the ninth, bases loading. Power hitter comes up to bat, and everybody knows he's thinking long ball. And the first pitch is a smoker down the middle. Strike one. Then the pitcher tries to waste one outside, but your boy jumps all over it and sends it toward the upper deck. The right fielder goes back, back, but just watches it. But some fans got himself a souvenir, and you've got yourself an empty dugout and a 4-3 win. That's a grand slam, and that's baseball. A message from Major League Baseball. Game two is picking up right where game one left off. Last night, the two teams combined for just eight hits, the fewest combined in a World Series game since October 18th of 1972. Game three that year when Cincinnati and Oakland combined for just seven hits in a 1-0 Reds win. David Justice begins the bottom of the second. There's not been a base runner in the ball game through an inning and a half. Cone's first pitch of the second is low. Ball one on Justice, who went 0 for 2 last night, but walked a couple of times. Oh, 
Justice Bream and Blouser coming up. That's low again. Two balls and no strikes. We mentioned last night that Tommy Glavin was going to be married on November 7th. Well, David Justice is engaged to Halle Berry, the actress. Played in Eddie Murphy's Boomerang. David appeared on a soap opera yeah. earlier this year. David Justice, not David Cohn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> David Cohn more concerned with blazing fastballs at the moment. The last one at 92. That ball low and away. Three balls and a strike. This is the first base runner of the night. He's been very patient in the postseason. Justice walked six times in seven games against Pittsburgh, walked twice last night, and he's on by the walk again tonight. Sid Bream, in case you couldn't tell. three last night with a single and he also walked and strikeouts have already been a factor tonight but Sid Bream is not a fan yet in this 1992 postseason that's in eight games he has not struck out he was the only one in league championship play as a matter of fact on either team of the regulars that did not strike out at least once David Cohn getting into some trouble here falling behind the big guys walking one and now one and zero to Breen. Hold the string one ball and one strike on Sid Breen. One of the reasons that David Cohn is so easy to run against is that not only is he a power pitcher but he has a high leg kick and he swings his leg out. Forty nine steals the most in the major leagues this year against David Cohn. Justice not much of a threat to run. He only stole two bases during the regular season. And Cohn helps to negate the damage done by the stolen bases because he strikes out so many hitters. Two and one on Bream. No score. We're in the bottom of the second. Bream at the plate with nobody out and Justice at first. Jeff Blauser is on deck. The 2 1 pitch. Well hit the center. Devon White sprinting back toward the track and he is there to make the catch. Justice went all the way to second. The throw comes to first. Not in time. Bring up Jeff Blauser. Throughout the postseason, he has been the number two hitter in the Atlanta lineup. Tonight he's batting sixth. He was 0 for 4 last night. And now just two for his last 23. Over that 0 for 11 span, he hasn't gotten the ball out of the infield either. interesting in speaking with Bobby Cox before the game tonight about the strategy employed by the Braves in the first inning when Otis Nixon was at second base with nobody out. Lauser tried to bunt on a 3-1 pitch. 
Bobby said that he gives Blauser the option a lot of times to bunt on his own to either push it and says he is among the best in the league at doing so. He tried to push it last night but popped it up to first base and the Braves lost a scoring opportunity in their half of the first inning. Knox says Blauser is among the best the Braves have at either bunting to the right side or slapping the ball with a swing to the right side. The runner takes off the pitch a strike the throw goes into center field. Justice will remain at second. The play was backed up by Devon White. Borders throw to the right field side of the bag. It missed Roberto Alomar. Borders was late in releasing this ball. I don't know whether he could not get the ball out of his glove or that he didn't see Justice running. I don't think he got to his feet quickly enough. He was off balance when he made the catch of the slider. And even though the hit and run was on, Bowser didn't make contact, so a stolen base for David Justice. And now a runner in scoring position with one out. In the second, no score in the game. And the count is a ball and a strike on Blauser with Damon Berryhill on deck. Fast ball up and in. Two and one. We mentioned last night the difficulty that Pat Borders, the catcher, has in catching this Toronto Blue Jays pitching staff. Jack Morris, very difficult. David Cohn, Juan, Juan Guzman. Cone might be the toughest. Plenty on that one. Two and two. The count on Blauser. The toughest because he has so many pitches in his arsenal and can throw them all over the place. Such a variety of pitches and to be effective the splitter must be down. You get a lot of wild pitches like that but you also get a lot of balls that you can't be in a position to throw well with runners running. That's one of the reasons they steal so much on Cone. The catcher's not in good position to throw. Slap to short. Lee will try third and hits the runner. Justice safe at third. Blauser aboard at first. Bad play. Bad play. With one out, with nobody out, you can understand it. With one out, that's your second out at third base. Go for the out at first base. Allow the runner to be at third. See, you're lining up right with the runner. Where's Kelly Gruber, Gruber going to make the catch? He's got to stand outside the line. Watch Justice running outside the line, and the throw hits him right in the small of the back. And Toronto, fortunate that Justice didn't score. But that throw should have been to first base. Fourth there of the postseason for Manuel Lee. He only made seven errors in the regular season in 128 games. Now last night's offensive star for the Braves, Damon Berryhill. Trying to break a scoreless tie in the second. Breaking ball high and away, ball one. Berryhill with a three-run homer in the sixth inning off Jack Morris. Accounting for all three Atlanta runs in the Braves' 3-1 victory. It was his first ever postseason home run. Chopped foul toward the Atlanta dugout. One ball and one strike. As Jim Codd mentioned, a chillier night here at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. It's in the mid 50s at game time and heading down. Cone wants a new ball. David Cohn has induced only one double play grounder in his last 24 starts. That takes in consideration his time with the Mets and the Blue Jays. Barry Hill, an easy man to double up if they can get a ground ball. Going to get a ground ball on that pitch. No chance for Barry Hill to swing at it. Two balls and a strike. The runner at third is David Justice. He walked and stole second, moved to third when Blauser reached on the fielder's choice. He 
We've yet to have a hit in this ball game. The runner takes off from first. The pitch gets by Borders. Justice coming to the plate. And he is safe. And all the way to third goes Jeff Flauser. 1-0 Atlanta. The splitter, we mentioned Cohn and Borders and the possibility of the wild pitches. Cohn had 12 this year. Not only does Justice score, but Jeff Blauser alertly goes to third without a play. It's a stolen base credited to Blauser. He takes third on the wild pitch that brought Justice in from third. And manager Cito Gaston is at the mound discussing the situation with his battery and a couple of his infielders with the runner third and one out and a count of three and one on Berry Hill. Whenever a catcher goes after a ball in the dirt with his glove first, then it usually gets by him. You can't feel that ball like a first baseman or an infielder. A catcher's mitt's not designed to do that. So you have to use your body. You try to block it with the chest protector. Borders didn't do that. The ball skipping over his glove, and Blauser going all the way around the third base. The Toronto infield is in. The 3 1 pitch to Berry Hill. Cut on and missed for strike two. Berry Hill will be followed by Mark Lemke. One run for Atlanta without a hit. Now the payoff pitch. Ball four. Second walk in the inning thrown by Cohn. Now Mark Lemke. One for three last night to keep his postseason batting average at 333. The infield back at double play depth now. With runners in the corners and one out in the second inning. The Braves lead one to nothing. Slap to short. Lee, nice play to his left. Double play ends the inning. And the Braves get just one. After two innings, David Cohn and the Blue Jays trail one to nothing. It was something, something. The Nicoderm patch. Nicotine transdermal system. Yeah, it's called Nicoderm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the patch. Right, it's a patch. Nicoderm. A lot of people don't know about it. You know, maybe I'll ask my doctor. Nicoderm. It's a patch, huh? Yeah, it's a patch. Nicoderm. Derm. Derm. By prescription only. Now. All over the world, the sisters and mothers and best friends waiting to hear from you can hear from you for less. Introducing the AT&T Special Country Plan. Save 15%. It's easy. There's no monthly fee. Just call right now and tell us you're one special country and start saving to everyone in it every hour of every day. We'll always be there to make international calling more affordable. If you've discovered that what sounds good to you is no sound at all, <laughs> discover just how much more quiet there is in the all-new 1993 Toyota Corolla. And discover Corolla. No doubt about it, he gave us some lasting memories. Reggie Jackson, Mr. October. I think I probably lived a lot of dreams for people along with living the dream for myself. But if you think he's just collecting cars now, think again. He's back in the baseball business. We'll explain on Eye on America tomorrow on the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. 
CBS Sports coverage of Game 2 of the 1992 World Series is brought to you by Coca-Cola Classic. You can't beat the real thing. Phillips Compact Disc Interactive, another first from Phillips. And by your Toyota dealer, who invites you to discover the all-new Corolla. Welcome back to Atlanta Fulton County Stadium for Game 2 of the World Series. Atlanta leads one game to none and leads tonight one run to none. As the Blue Jays bat in the third inning with the bottom third of the order coming up against John Smoltz. Fastball right down Peachtree Street for one strike on Borders. It was two for three last night. He had half of the Blue Jays' hits off Tom Glavin. But which Peachtree Street? There are about 17 of them. <laughs> Peachtree everything in this town. Yeah, John Smoltz is moving the ball around tonight. Up and down all of the Peachtree Streets. <laughs> He'll face Borders, Lee, and Cone. He's fan five of the first six. Well, one and two. Smoltz has struck out the last four Blue Jay hitters consecutively. Chopped down to third. A long throw for Pendleton. And it's on the money. One out in the third inning. Major League Baseball wishes to apologize to the people of Canada and to all baseball fans for the unintentional improper display of the Canadian flag during the national anthem prior to the start of tonight's World Series game. The color guard inadvertently displayed the flag upside down. It was totally unintentional and Major League Baseball apologizes for it. Manuel Lee at the plate with one strike. John Smoltz roaring through the first two and a third innings and pitching with a one nothing lead. Lee was 0 for 3 last night. Fastball backs him off the plate. It was inside one and one. Breaking ball. Did he check his swing? No. Says third base umpire Bob Davidson. Lee appeared to go too far. Yeah, mm -hmm. easily. Well hit right center field justice on the run and just in front of the warning track he makes the catch. We hope you'll join us Tuesday night for Game 3 of the World Series live from Toronto Sky Dome. Steve Avery is scheduled to oppose Juan Guzman. And our coverage begins at 8 p.m. Eastern Time here on CBS. David Cohn, accustomed to hitting during his time with the New York Mets. He's a career 154 hitter. This year with New York, he hit just 092, going 6 for 65. Smoltz working quickly. And who to thunk it? The first hit of the night comes from David Cohn, the pitcher. A slap base hit through the left side of the infield. That is only the third hit by pitchers, by American League pitchers since the designated hitter originated back in 1973. Pitchers now are three for one hundred and nine and two for their last eighty four. Mike Moore had a double back in 1989. Mike pitching for the Oakland Athletics and Tim Stoddard had a single for the Baltimore Orioles in the 1979 League Championship Series. Now Devon White lines one to right. A great catch by Justice. The defensive play of the World Series to date made by David Justice in right field. What a play.
play by Justice. Right off the turf. We'll return to Atlanta Fulton County Stadium after this word from your local station. Someday, these movies will be on cable. Someday, these movies will be in video stores. Someday, these movies will be in theaters around the world. But next month, these movies will only be on CBS. This is CBS. Stagecoach funds have arrived. Mutual funds for investors more comfortable on Main Street than Wall Street. They're here! Nine different funds, from tax-free income to government securities to long-term capital growth, all aimed at helping you get where you're going. Stagecoach funds, now available at every Wells Fargo office. Climb aboard. In Europe, things happen on time. Right on schedule, punctuality is the norm. And that makes Europe the ideal environment for UPS. Fact is, UPS has built the most comprehensive delivery network in Europe. So when you have a shipment going there that has to be on time, use the delivery company whose punctuality is a time-honored tradition. UPS, we run the tightest ship in Europe. Well, I think that over 10% of the US population goes to bed hungry. Like my restaurant, most restaurants have extra food, but they don't necessarily know what to do with that food. The most effective way that I've found is through a national organization called Share Our Strength. They connect the restaurants with the shelters because American Express has provided the funding. Their dollars are actually going to connect food with someone who needs it. American Express supports Share Our Strength and the many restaurants that believe nobody should have to go hungry. Jim Hill's Post Game Show, today. A whale of a view comes to us from airship Shamu. The blimp represents SeaWorld parks in Florida, California, Ohio, and Texas. And based on that clever play on words, I presume that they have hired you, Mr. McCarver, to write their blimp copy for them. Reprise, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Bottom of the third, and John Smoltz, the hitter. Atlanta leads one to nothing. And like David Cohn, he is a hitter. He drove in a run in the league championship series against Pittsburgh. Fastball missed for ball one. Cito Gaston told us before the game that David Cohn convinced him that he was a good hitter. Cone told Gaston he had 18 hits in 1989. Sure enough, that did lead all National League pitchers that year. Smoltz hit 160 during the regular season. He did hit a home run. And that night he drove in the run in Pittsburgh, game four. He had two hits and a stolen base in that game. That has never been done by a pitcher in league championship play. He was a bit overmatched on that fastball. Two and two. He'll be followed by Nixon and Sanders. Strike three. That's the first strikeout of the night for the major league strikeout leader in 1992, David Cohn. And the last one clocked at 90 miles per hour. Otis Nixon was out on a fly ball to left field as he let off the Atlanta first. Out of play, one strike on Nixon with Otis up there. They're in tight at the corners for Toronto. Now 
out of play again. 0 and 2. We talked last night about when Todd Stottlemyre came in the game, only the second father-son tandem to pitch in World Series play. The other, Jim Bagby, well, Otis Nixon is playing in this World Series, and his brother, Donnell Nixon, played for the San Francisco Giants back in 1989. Of course, the World Series that year interrupted by the horrible earthquake that hit the Bay Area. One and two now. We're in the bottom of the third. Atlanta leads one to nothing. And despite the fact that the Braves do not have a hit to this point off David Cohn. Otis doesn't have one in his career off Cone. Still one and two. I'm Sean McDonough along with Tim McCarver, Jim Codd, and Pat O'Brien. Delighted to have you with us from Atlanta Fulton County Stadium for game two of the 1992 World Series. that Nixon does not have a hit against Cohn and he doesn't you go up and down the Braves lineup and none of the Braves through their careers have hit David Cohn that well the only Brave in the lineup tonight as we mentioned earlier that hits him very well Deion Sanders and the other two guys Lonnie Smith and Jeff Treadway aren't playing this evening. John Smoltz trying to hide the fact perhaps that he's warming his hand <laughs> camouflage hand warmer in center field Devon White takes the line drive two down yeah that hand warmer looks like something you take to a duck blind not to a dugout <laughs> look at that why is it camouflage <laughs> that's a question for Andy Rooney I think <laughs> Well, it seems to be working, that's for sure. As Smoltz has been mowing down the Blue Jays through the first three innings. Cohn has retired the first two in the bottom of the third. Deion Sanders hit a fly ball on the first pitch he saw in the first inning to deep right field. And Dave Winfield handled it up against the wall. Sanders now 0 for 6 with three strikeouts in the postseason. 2 and 0 the count. Dion obviously did not play for the Atlanta Falcons today and they could have used him. They were trounced out at San Francisco by the 49ers 56 to 17. Three and all. You saw those numbers six for 11 and another reason that Bobby Cox says that Sanders is in the game tonight. He also hit David Cohn very well in spring training. The New York Mets and the Atlanta Braves train very close together. The Mets in Port St. Lucie, Florida, and Atlanta in West Palm Beach. So they play each other often, and Sanders really zeroing in on David Cohn, and that's another reason that he's playing tonight. He has walked on four pitches, and Cohn will have to keep an eye on him. This matchup favors Sanders if he tries to steal with his 26 stolen bases during the year and Cohn's difficulty. In holding runners close. Terry Pendleton stands in. He chopped a short his first time up. 0 for 5 now in the World Series is Pendleton. One nothing Atlanta in the bottom of the third. Sanders at first with two outs. First pitch to Pendleton is the fifth straight ball thrown by Cohn. Walking batters is only one way of being wild. A worse way is when you coax a ball back in the strike zone. You don't throw it. You just try to throw a strike. Then all of a sudden, boom, a guy hits a home run off a of pitch like that. So a walk not only puts a guy on first base, but if you fall behind a guy like Terry Pendleton, he can hurt you with the long ball because you're really not throwing the fastball like you normally would throw it. It's one thing you try to guard against. Sanders on the move. 
Borders won't try the throw. He couldn't get it out of his glove on the first attempt. He was also handicapped by the swing of Pendleton, and Sanders has the stolen base, the third of the night already for the Braves. With two outs and a runner on first that is running, it is not considered a hit and run play. Sanders got a good jump. He decides to steal it, and Terry Pendleton decides to swing. So anytime a batter swings with the runner running, it's not always a hit and run play. And Galen Sisko, the Toronto pitching coach, is at the mound. Deion Sanders is not the only two sport athlete in the park tonight. Galen Sisko, many years a major league pitcher, was also a football standout at Ohio State. As a matter of fact, he was a captain of the Ohio State football team in the late 50s to beat Oregon in the Rose Bowl as a linebacker. If you're wondering the World Series record for stolen bases in a game by one team is five shared by four teams the last to do it the 1987 Cardinals so with the stolen base by Sanders the Braves have three already and we're only in the third inning three stolen bases and no hits and one run in they lead one to nothing Pendleton the best in the majors this year with runners in scoring position he hit 387. And he's ahead in the count, two balls and a strike. Three and one. Pendleton will be followed by David Justice. The 3 1 from Cone is a strike, even though it was handled awkwardly by Pat Borders. When he knows it's coming and still has a tough time with it, that denotes good movement on the fastball by David Cone. Deion Sanders at second base with two outs in the third one nothing Atlanta and the payoff pitch up coming to Terry Pendleton. The first Cone steps off and looks Deion back to second. Now Booz neither Manuel Lee nor Roberto Alomar was anywhere near second base. Now the 3 2 pitch. Bounced up the middle. Alomar, great diving stop to keep it in the infield. Roberto Alomar, the gold glove winner at second base, saved a run for Toronto by knocking that one down and keeping it in the infield. Infielders are reminded with a runner at second base and two outs, if you can't make a play, keep it in the infield. And that's what Alomar does on this sparkling diving catch. And watch his reactions trying to throw behind Sanders at third base. Boy, a beautiful play by Alomar to possibly save a run, depending on what Justice does. Now, Justice at the plate. He walked and scored the Atlanta run last inning. It's a hit for Pendleton, the first Atlanta hit of the night. They have the shift on again in the infield for the Blue Jays. Three infielders on the right side. As Justice takes the ball low and in. Borders on his way to the mound. Apparently, they're getting some help from the dugout. Saw the inquisitive look on the face of Borders as he 
eyed the Toronto dugout on his way to the mound. It's not uh, they're not talking now about pitching to David Justice. They're talking about when and if Terry Pendleton runs what to do with the throw. Does he throw through. Does he throw to an infielder in front of the back. Do they throw to try to get Terry Pendleton Pendleton on the other hand talking to Pat Corrales the first base coach to see if he's running. I don't think they'll be running here unless the count becomes unfavorable for David Justice. The count is one to zero at the moment. Pendleton not running on this pitch off speed and Justice was out in front of it one ball and one strike. Now if it goes to one ball and two strikes you can look for Pendleton to run. Then the counts in favor of the pitcher and you're liable to get a throw through if the pitch is a ball and Sanders could score from third base on the throw to second. He had a glimpse of Gene Tennis in the Toronto dugout. He calls the pitch outs. So that's a high fly ball along the right field line. Winfield in the corner makes the catch in fair territory and the Braves strand two. After three innings in game two it's Atlanta one and Toronto nothing. Toyota proudly presents all around champions. Cleveland's Felix Fermin is committed to providing a positive influence for local youngsters through his support of summer reading programs. He knows the value of a good education, so he volunteers his time to make sure that children learn the benefits of visiting their libraries and reading more. Toyota is pleased to salute all-around champion Felix Fermin by contributing $1,000 to the Cleveland Indians charities. What's that? It's a consumer survey. They want to know if you're happy with your car. Oh, I am. Oh, I know. And as of last night, so does everybody at the Martin's dinner party. In its first year, the all-new Toyota Camry moved thousands to appreciate that a car could be everything you want and even more than you imagined. You gave two complete strangers a 20-minute test drive. 15. It was 15. The 1993 Toyota Camry. Few cars actually move you. This is one. The greatest variety of dinosaurs were alive during the Cretaceous period, which was toward the end of the Mesozoic era. What if we said you could go to the Smithsonian anytime you wanted without leaving your living room? Wow. Awesome. Oh. And what if we told you you could hold an entire pinball arcade in the palm of your hand? Wow. Cool. Philips, the inventors of CD technology, have captured some of the most entertaining and educational experiences imaginable and put them on a new kind of compact disc called CD Interactive. Philips CD Interactive transforms your television from something you look at and listen to into something you actually experience. CD Interactive, available only on the Imagination Machine, the world's first CDI player, and another first from Philips. This game summary is sponsored by AT&T. In World Series play, the home team has won eight in a row and 25 of 31. Tonight, the Braves, the home team, lead one to nothing. John Smoltz struck out five of the first six batters that he faced. He's only allowed one hit through three innings, and the only run in this game scored on a wild pitch by David Cohn that brought David Justice in from third in the second. So we go to the fourth. And Roberto Alomar leads off. He bounced back to the mound his first time up. And he made a defensive play that saved a run for the Toronto Blue Jays and kept it at one to nothing. The first pitch is the biggest pitch in a sequence. And John Smoltz has thrown a first pitch strike to eight of the first 11 batters. But he's fallen behind Alomar. This is back. The 2 0 pitch. Looked pretty good to call the ball 3 and 0. Alomar to be followed by Joe Carter and Dave Winfield. And the meat of the batting order coming up. And the 3 0 offering is high, ball four. The last time Joe Carter came up, you may remember the pitch sequence since we were talking about that. It was a good morning, good afternoon, and good night with Joe. Breaking ball. Fastball. Breaking ball. Let's see what we see this time. Hey. 
Five strikeouts for Smoltz. Those came within the first six batters of the night for Toronto, and he hasn't had one since. Tying run at first base with nobody out in the fourth inning for the Blue Jays. One strike on Carter. This is the first time that Carter has come to the plate in the World Series with either Alomar or White on base. They had been a combined 0 for 11 prior to the walk to Roberto Alomar, the first walk thrown by Smoltz tonight. Mm, Carter thought it was outside. Mike Riley says no, it wasn't. 0 and 2 on the left fielder. Barry Hill sitting outside. Oh man, that's a tough pitch to Joe Carter. Joe thought it was outside. If it was on the plate, it was a perfect pitch. Might have looked worse than it was because Barry Hill stabbed at it with his momentum taking the pitch away from the plate. Robbie Alomar was a perfect five for five in stolen bases against the Oakland Athletics in the league championship series. Not running on this pitch and it's one ball and two strikes now on Carter. And that success for Alomar stealing against Oakland came against the team in Cito Gaston Field does as good a job holding runners on as a pitching staff as any in baseball and Terry Steinbach certainly one of the best catchers in the game. Alomar bluff towards second and now the Barry Hill can't find the ball and went after it rather lackadaisically Alomar takes second that Barry Hill fielded that they might have had Alomar trapped between first and second and if they didn't trap him then they at least hold him to first base watch the fake break by Alomar there he stops the balls in the dirt now watch Barry Hill's reaction ball in the dirt and he does not go after it quickly so Alomar just goes to second base. That is a strange strange form of a delayed steal. It was delayed because of the actions by Barry Hill uh, behind the plate and I guess what Alomar was doing then thinking about. Uh, actually it's uh, being scored a wild mm -hmm. pitch since he had stopped 17 wild pitches this season the most in the National League in the third straight season that John has led the league in wild pitches. But had Barry Hill hopped on that ball Alomar stays at first. Mm -hmm. Another one that could have been a wild pitch blocked by Barry Hill out in front of the play. It was scored a wild pitch because Alomar had turned to retreat toward first base. It was not his intention to steal until the ball eluded the grasp of Barry Hill. So a runner in scoring position with nobody out. And the crowd coming back into it with the count three and two on Carter. Smoltz pitching at a jam for the first time tonight. Payoff pitch. Foul to the screen. Like David Cohn, Joe Carter is from Kansas City. And a couple of times in the postseason, he has had his favorite ribs flown in from Kansas City at his own expense to feed the Blue Jay troops. He did it once in the LCS against the Oakland out in Oakland and flew in some rips on the workout day prior to game one. Nothing wrong with that, is it? Gotta like to have a teammate like that. Yeah. Joe Carter, you're one of the most respected men in the game. Really a good guy. Count still three and two on Carter. Oh, for one, because they haven't had many opportunities. They only had four hits last night. Only had four base runners last night. Popped up. Pendleton. One out. That'll bring up Dave Winfield, who once upon a time was a teammate of his manager, Cito Gaston. When I started this game, uh, he was a right fielder, and um, we roomed together at a time at one time. Got to know him real well, learned a lot from him, 
and um, he supported me. Yeah, I mean, in, in different ways, mentally, emotionally. I just appreciate it. They were fellow outfielders with the San Diego Padres in the early and mid 70s. For a while, they were roommates. Tito Gaston still supporting Dave mm -hmm. Winfield happily. <laughs> And Winfield helping to get Gaston into the World Series as a manager for the first time. Little squibber out in front of the plate. Smoltz, not much of a throw, but he got it there in time to get Winfield. For the second out on the play, Roberto Alomar took third. John didn't think he had a lot of time on this play. He thought he had to rush his throw, but he bare hands the ball and throws out Winfield rather handily. Alomar, as you saw, going to third base. He's there with two down in the fourth inning. The Braves lead one to nothing. And once again, with Alomar on third and two outs, the wild pitch becomes something of concern for Bobby Cox about John Smoltz. Won this inning, 17 this year. John Olrude, the batter. Here is the pitch in the dirt. Here comes Alomar. Barry Hill to Smoltz, and he is ahead at the plate. Rich Hacker, the third base coach, keeps Alomar away from Mike Riley, and Cito Gaston is hot. We talked to the wild pitch. Barry Hill allows it to trickle away from him. He gets it back to Smoltz. And we'll see if he's safe. Yes, he, was he is safe, safe. Easily, not even close. One more look. Little shovel pass by Barry Hill. Well, he was safe the first two times and safe again. Yep. The hand gets the corner of the plate before the tag is on the arm of Alomar. Still 1-0 Atlanta back in a moment. MXV4, a luxury performance tire with a very special feature, climate control, Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. Oh, look how we change. At JCPenney, we're really turning things around. We're looking for more quality. Inside and out. Upside and down. We've raised our standards. Behind the scenes. Around the neck. And across the board. And while we're turning more of our attention to quality. One thing remains the same. Our great values. And our great values are everywhere you turn. Why do people really like Toyota Paseo? Take this home lie detector test. I like Paseo because A, it's practical, mm -hmm. has a driver's side airbag, mm -hmm. or B, women dig it. Mm. A, it has 100 horsepower performance, or B, women dig it. Mm. A, Paseo starts under $11,500, or B, women dig it. Paseo, a very practical car from Toyota. Are your teeth flat? Does your dentist know that? Of course. That's why he uses special instruments to clean between teeth. Well, now there's a new instrument you can use at home. Introducing Crest Complete, the first rippled toothbrush. Like a dentist's instrument, Crest Complete reaches between teeth up to 37% farther than the leading flat bristled brush. So to help maintain a dentist clean at home, get new Crest Complete. Only Crest could make a brush this complete. Can Wood survive a camp out with the kids? I'm trying to teach the kids how the Indians win. If I was an Indian bad now, when I'd be using my lighter. Evening shade at a special time, Monday. Watch where Alomar's hand slides across the plate before the tag. Right there. He is clearly safe. But the thing about Mike Riley's call, he did wait. And you can see right mm -hmm. there that uh, his hand is clearly on the plate. 
But he did wait, but we thought he made the wrong call. Mm -hmm. Tough call. It was a close yep. play, but Malamar should have been ruled safe. What may have happened was John Smoltz's leg might have been blocked out the call and not given Mike Riley a clear shot. He's looking at that angle the same way we were from the third angle. But not as high up as mm -hmm. our camera was. <laughs> And on the bench, John Smoltz has ice on his left wrist. That's his glove hand, the hand obviously that he used to apply the tag to Alamar. So it's on to the bottom of the fourth. One nothing Atlanta, and a count of one and two on Sid Bream, who was out on a fly ball to center his first time up. Laws are on deck, then Barry Hill against Cone. You mentioned just before it happened, as usual, Tim, the possibility of a wild pitch. One of the things the runners on third have to be aware of in this park is there is not a lot of room right behind home plate. That wasn't a factor in that particular play because the ball went sideways. But we've seen balls in this park hit the backstop and bounce a long way back to home plate. So the catcher has a very short distance to go to track it down. If the pitcher is to the plate quickly, they can make a play on a runner coming in from third. And one of the key points, if you're a base runner against either of these pitchers, I think uh, it's pretty clear by now that you have to be ready to advance on balls in the dirt. The full count on the leadoff hitter here in the fourth inning, Sid Bream. And ball four, didn't miss by much. Bream aboard to start the inning on the fourth walk thrown by David Cohn. Cohn had controlled trouble during the regular season. He averaged four walks per nine innings. He had never averaged more than 3.1 walks per nine in his four previous 200 inning seasons. That is a huge difference. Mm -hmm. That's almost one walk a game difference. Jeff Blauser. Ball one, low and away. Blauser reached on the fielder's choice that set up the run in the second. He came to the plate with David Justice at second base and one out and hit a chopper to short. Manuel Lee tried to make the play at third on Justice. He hit Justice with the throw. Both Blauser and Justice were safe, and Justice scored the game's only run on a wild pitch. Two and oh. John with the hand warmer on his right hand, and now it appears they're going to give further treatment to his left wrist. You can see the wrap, and they've already wrapped his left wrist. <laughs> on the corner for a strike, two and one. Lauser to be followed by Damon Berryhill. Breaking ball, low and away, three and one. I think Cohn's trying to be too fine with all the hitters now. He's trying to make perfect pitches with everything he throws. The essence of pitching is to stay ahead and then expand the strike zone. David's expanding the strike zone too early in the count and falling behind a lot of Atlanta hitters. Bream takes off on the 3-1 pitch. It's lined in the right field. Bream does not stop around second. He's in the third ahead of the throw. First and third and nobody out for Atlanta in the fourth inning. Jeff Blauser ends an 0 for 12 drought. The count in the hitter's favor and Sid Green Bream running and watch him look toward home right there to make sure the ball is low enough. Now he looks to right field and decides to go to third and makes it easily. Blauser with a second Atlanta hit of the ball game. Damon Berryhill drew a walk his first time up. Field back at double play depth. The first pitch to Perry Hill is a breaking ball low and in.
Hauser back to first. Gene Tennis will call pitch outs from the dugout for Pat Borders. And he would be uh, more reluctant to do that now because David Cohn can't find the plate. He's too wild to be pitching out and putting him behind in the count. I don't think you'll see that until he gets his control. Big rip by Barry Hill with a three run homer last night. It was the Braves first three run homer in a World Series game since 1958 when pitcher Lou Burdett belted one. Cohn has thrown 71 pitches. Still nobody out here in the fourth inning. Tom Stottlemyer is throwing in the Toronto bullpen. Former Blue Jay manager Jimmy Williams, the third base coach. Jeff Blauser stole five bases during the regular season. He was also thrown out five times. Throw to third. Safe at third and just barely is Sid Bream. That is a planned play even though had Barry Hill hit it through the position then Kelly Gruber would have been headed to the bag but a very close play at third base. You don't see that play often with a left handed batter up there unless you pitch out if you're throwing it in the strike zone the batter might hit it where the third baseman was mm -hmm. not the case then. Cone could certainly use a strikeout. Instead it's a line drive to right Winfield coming on to make the catch Bream won't try it. He came about 15 feet down the line and then put the brakes on. So one out now and still runners at first and third here in the fourth inning as Atlanta tries to build on a one nothing lead. We talked earlier about the Atlanta Braves possibly taking advantage of Dave Winfield's arm. Normally it's strong but Dave Winfield playing only 26 games in right field this year so his arm hasn't had a lot of action but he did make a fine throw to hold Green at third then. Into a double play, ending the second. The Braves had a great chance in that inning to add to their one-nothing lead. A lot of things Bobby Cox can do here. Limke is an excellent bunter, and with the pitcher up next, possibly to avoid the double play ball that would end the inning, we may see a squeeze here. Cone stepped off. It might have been in part to see if Lemke gave any indication of a bunt. He did not. Ball one low. If you're the runner at third base in a squeeze situation, the one thing you don't want to do is to leave too soon. If you leave too soon, the pitcher throws a pitch out. And they nail you. Eddie Stanky used to say, in order to prevent that, take one step back toward third. That prevents you from leaving too soon. Lemke with a slow ground ball. Alomar can't play it. Bream has scored. Blauser heads to third. Two nothing Atlanta. Lemke now nine for 19 in postseason play with runners in scoring position. That's a 474 batting average. This ball is not hit hard, but under the diving Olerud's glove, and then off the heel of the glove of the diving Alomar. Excellent base running by Jeff Blauser. A lot of players would just stop at second, then pick up the play. Blauser kept going. And again, another squeeze situation here. With the pitcher, Smoltz at the plate. 
Ruber is in on the grass at third as Smoltz looked at a strike. He was called out on strikes in the third. Two runs, three hits for Atlanta. No runs, one hit for Toronto. Runners at the corners with one out in the fourth. The 0 1 to Smoltz. Again, he goes diving out of the way at a breaking ball low, one ball and one strike. back to first he did not have a stolen base in the regular season <laughs> certainly a lot going on in this situation signs being relayed on both sides that slapped the short of one hopper Lee turns the double play with ease so the Braves get one, but it could have been worse for David Cohn after four, two nothing Atlanta. about Clinton except promises. He tells everybody what they want to hear. Well, he wants to spend more money, and the only place he can get it is from the taxpayers. The higher taxes. Less food on the table. Broken promises. Less clothes on the kids' back. I don't know how we can take any more taxes. Less money to go to the doctor. He's raised taxes in Arkansas, he'll raise taxes here. Just less of everything. Autumn, a time when trees cast new colors. A time for sharing warmth. And at McDonald's, we're doing just that. Sharing the warmth of our new oven-baked apple pies. A cinnamon-dusted crust with golden, delicious apple filling. And now when you buy one, your local McDonald's donates 25 cents to Ronald McDonald Children's Charities, who bring warmth and hope to kids everywhere. Try our new baked apple pie. It's a delicious way to warm your heart. Series Magic Moments. This year's will be captured by world class photographers and writers, including W.P. Kinsella in the official 1992 World Series book. Featuring 250 full color photographs, this collector's edition is a perfect gift. Call 1 800 488 1000 and receive a 20% discount. 1 800 488 1000 or send check or money order for $23.95 to this address. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. If you're Jeff Blauser on at third base, what you want the defense to think is that the squeeze is on. So Jeff Blauser breaks two steps quickly. Now watch Kelly Gruber, the third baseman, react just as quickly. And Smoltz makes it a moot point by grounding into a double play. David Cohn with two double plays in this game, and coming into this game, he had thrown only one in his last 24 ball games. So the Braves lead two to nothing. With two double play ground balls, have thwarted their opportunities to build on that lead. John Olderud was at the plate when Alomar was thrown out trying to score on the wild pitch that ended last inning. 0 and 2 on the Toronto first baseman who has never played a day in the minor leagues. He came right to the major leagues with the Blue Jays off the campus of Washington State University. Very high and deep. But with room, David Justice at the edge of the warning track. 
For those of you just joining us, here is how we got to two to nothing in favor of Atlanta. David Justice scored from third on a wild pitch by David Cohn in the bottom of the second. And Mark Lemke rounded a single through the right side, knocking it Sid Bream, who had started the fourth inning with a walk, to make it two zip. Kelly Gruber at the plate. A ball high. Gruber struck out swinging his first time up. At end of the second, Smoltz has not had a strikeout since, even though he fanned five through the first two innings. John Smoltz traded from the Detroit Tigers. As a matter of fact, he's from Detroit. Down to third, bobbled by Pendleton. He recovers and throws him out. Quick reactions by Terry Pendleton. An in-between hop looked like off the heel of the glove. And watch how quickly Pendleton recovers. Fine play by Terry Pendleton. And the strong throw got Gruber, who runs pretty well. Pendleton has won two gold gloves at third base in the National League. Cito Gaston was complaining to home plate umpire Mike Riley. I believe it's the wrapping on the left hand of John Smoltz. You may remember that he tried to make the tag of Roberto Alomar. As a matter of fact, he did make the tag. And you're not, to, you're not supposed to be able to deceive the hitter with any particle of your clothing. And it is that left wrap he has on his left wrist. I think, uh, what are you going to do? Paint it blue? Mm. <laughs> Put a blue wristband over it. And they were trying to pull down his sweatshirt over it. But apparently it won't stay down. Here is how John Smoltz hurt his left wrist. In the top of the fourth inning, Roberto Alomar trying to score on a short, wild pitch. Barry Hill to Smoltz. As you can see, he was in ahead of the tag, but Mike Riley called him out. But it looked like John Smoltz jamming his left wrist into Alomar, and he is wrapping it. But uh, certainly, Cito Gaston within his rights to ask for for Smoltz's uh, sleeve to come down further. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I think he took the wrap off. Two away in the fifth inning, two nothing Atlanta. The bases are empty for Pat Borders. Ball got a piece of Damon Berryhill. Borders bounced to third his first time up. We've seen instances in the past where managers have passed chains around the neck to pitchers to be removed <laughs> because they're a distraction. Oftentimes it can serve to motivate the pitcher, get him a bit angry. Remember Oil Can Boyd. But every time he went out there, he had the Mr. T starter kit on, and undoubtedly the opposing manager would come out and ask that he remove the jewelry. Two balls and a strike on borders. Jack Schway, it's a strike nonetheless on the breaking ball. Even count of two and two. John Smoltz is just making some nasty pitches on. The Blue Jay hitters, a 2-1 breaking ball right on the corner. Smoltz has only allowed one hit. That was the slap base hit to the opposite field by the pitcher Cole. And he's only walked one. So Toronto only had four base runners last night, and they've only had two tonight through four and two-thirds innings. Three two pitch missed low with the fastball and the Blue Jays have their third base runner of the night on the second walk thrown by Smoltz. We mentioned John Smoltz coming over from the Detroit Tigers in 1987 for Doyle Alexander. Alexander went on to become nine and zero for a team that won the American League Eastern Division Detroit. So Detroit got their guy for immediacy's sake and John Smoltz 
was a pitcher of the future and has he ever delivered a terrific trade for both teams but better for Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And really all that maneuvering ties in with the Atlanta Braves as well because the Atlanta Braves traded Dwayne Ward to Toronto to get Doyle Alexander. Then they turned around and traded Alexander to Detroit to get Smoltz. Manuel Lee looks at a ball low, two and old account. Barry Hill out to the mound, and Pendleton will join them. So the Detroit connection with John uh, Smoltz, I'll tell you, uh, recently he has been rolling the dice like Nathan Detroit. The head uh, character in Guys and Dolls, Damon Runyon's uh, famous play that's been revived on Broadway. And there's a great line to a song in that that says, there's an awful lot of lettuce for the fella who can get us there. And if that doesn't apply to John Smoltz, because there's a lot of lettuce for the fella who can get us, and he's one of them. <laughs> Little broken bat looper, that will drop. Borders to second, and he'll stop there. So Manuel Lee delivers the second hit of the night for Toronto, and now they have the tying run aboard. And the go-ahead run coming to the plate in the person of the pitcher, David Cohn. How much lettuce last year? About $120,000. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of lettuce. As we mentioned, John Smoltz picked up 50000 for being the MVP in the National League Championship Series this year. A lot of lettuce, too. Let us return to the game now, I think. <laughs> David Cohn, single to left his first time up. We mentioned he had 18 hits in 1989, leading all National League pitchers. Smoltz missed outside with the ball. Tim, would the manager have any thought of pinch hitting for Cohen? In I this don't situation? think so. No. He's allowed two runs. It's the fifth inning. He's a pretty good hitter. He has one of the two hits. Mm -hmm. And he is a guy who can swing the bat. I think uh, persuading Cito Gaston that he is a pretty good hitter. And Cito Gaston saying, uh, well, he's a fine athlete. He mentioned uh, leading the National League of pitchers in hits in 1989 with 18. The 2-0. Is low and Smoltz is in danger of walking David Cole. Bringing the top of the order back up as Devon White waits on deck. Leo Mazzoni, the pitching coach. In the background, Jim Beecham, the dugout coach. Beecham, a former minor league manager in the Toronto organization. Now the 3 0 pitch. Oh, with a bit of an acting job trying to buy the call. 3 and 1. The pitchers don't have much of a chance to work on that technique of diving out of the way of pitching. He'll probably take again. He does. It's a strike, and now the count is full with two outs. The runners will be off from second and first. Fans trying to spur John Smoltz onto his sixth strikeout of the night. He hasn't had one since the second inning. The runners go. Cohn lines it into center field to hit. Borders is being waved in. Nixon's throw is cut off. Throw to second. Goes into center field. Lee hobbling toward third. He is hurt. Cohn into second. It's two to one Atlanta. David Cohn is two for two. But the concern on the Toronto side at the moment is Manuel Lee who went hobbling toward third base. Orders congratulated as Tommy Craig the trainer comes out to take a look at Lee. So it'll be a RBI single for David Cohn an error on Sid Bream. Had Borders not been running this throw wouldn't have been cut off but Nixon hits the cutoff man but Bream throws it into center 
and Lee hobbles to third. Leo Mazzoni at the mound. Tommy Craig, the trainer, is running back toward the dugout. Cito Gaston, as you can see, is still out there with third base coach Rich Hacker. I believe he heard it with the dive back into second base. I don't think he heard it rounding the bag, but I think he hammered that left knee into the ground trying to dive back into second base. And right there, he stops the throw by Breen. I believe that's where he hurt his knee. Because nothing indicated uh, that he was hurt before that uh, slide back into second. The tying run at third. The go ahead run at second with two down in the fifth inning. Two to one Atlanta. Devon White takes a strike. David Cohn, the first American League pitcher with two hits in a World Series game since Mickey Lolich in game two in 1968 with the Tigers. One of those by Lolich, a home run off Nelson Bryles. David Cohn wasn't lying when he told Cito Gaston he could hit. That's right. 0 oh 2 on White. He's 0 for 2 tonight. He was robbed of a hit on a great diving play in right field in the third by David Justice. The 0 2 pitch. Lee bluffed way down the line and White fouled it off. And well, Lee came almost halfway down the third baseline on that pitch. Pete Smith, the right hander, Charlie Lee Brandt, the lefty. The first action of the night in the Braves pen. On the home runs last night, all four runs in the game last night scored on homers. There wasn't really a lot of action. The pitchers mowed them down tonight. We've had all kinds of strange happenings. And we're not even midway through game two of the World Series. Right asked for time as Smoltz took too much time. 0 and 2 the count. Lemke has to hurry. White runs well. He bobbled it. Save at first. Tie game as Lee has scored from third. You're right, Sean. This game or this series has gone from long ball to short ball. An RBI single for White. Watch the bobble, the momentary hesitation. By Lemke. He reaches in, he came up with glove and not ball, and the throw is late. White safe. It has been scored ahead in an RBI for Devon White. Now the go ahead runners at third. 2 2 the score with runners at the corners and two outs for Roberto Alomar. Alomar walked his last time up. And the hit by White, the first hit in this series for the top of the order duo of Devon White and Roberto Alomar. They had been a combined 0 for 11 with just the walk to Alomar his last time up. Now the crowd very silent here at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium as Smoltz misses with ball two, two and oh. You've heard of the steal sign, and a lot of managers have a stop sign with a fast runner on at first base. In my opinion, now's a good time for the stop sign because a single on the right side plates the go-ahead run. I don't think White should be running here. He's not, and it's ball three. Here you see the hole on the right side of the of the infield Lemke towards second base Alomar a straightaway hitter to prove that he had two home runs in the ALCS one to right field and one to left field but you can see that big gaping hole on the right side three and oh on Alomar he's taking all the way and it's a strike Roberto will be followed by Joe Carter. Oh, 
Holt looked toward third, then turned to first. To short. Nice play by Blouser as the ball bounced up at the last moment. That ends the inning. The Blue Jays get two to tie midway through game two, two to the score. It takes a special kind of car to pass the test we give at Oldsmobile. Like Cutlass Sierra, recently ranked the best model in initial quality in its price class by J.D. Power & Associates. What's more, of all the Cutlass Sierras sold in the last 10 years, 95% are still on the road. So if you're looking for a quality car, you know exactly where to look. Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. In just 45 seconds, this commercial will tell you about all the highly intelligent products from Magnavox. So that means that I have exactly 3.5 seconds to tell you about the ingenious Magnavox 27-inch TV with smart window. Leaving me just 5.3 seconds to let you know how incredible this Magnavox CD radio cassette recorder sounds. Oh no, that leaves me only 4.2 seconds to tell you about the brilliant picture on this Magnavox 3-inch LCD TV. Uh, excuse me, uh, I've only got 6.1 seconds to tell you this Magnavox digital shelf system has a carousel CD Changer. And I have one second to tell you, time is up. What do you mean, time is up? What? We've been standing here for hours. Get my I engine on the phone. Don't you know who I am? Who timed this commercial? The ingenious products from Magnavox. Smart, very smart. It seems Europeans have a passion for certain things, American. And one of them happens to be the reliable, efficient delivery of a certain American delivery company, UPS. Fact is, we've built the most comprehensive delivery network in Europe. So next time you need something shipped there, use the outfit Europeans find, well, so fashionable. UPS, we run the tightest ship in Europe. He'd do anything for his friends. You hit the papers again. How's your pal, Lucky Luciano? You just said no women. You didn't say anything about mobsters. He'd do anything for his president. Right. He's the president. We need a boost from our friends in Chicago who control the unions. He'd do anything to save his career. Kill to get a shot at this. Except lie. And what he didn't put into words, he put into his music. That's life. That's life. Sinatra, the music was just the beginning. At the conclusion of tonight's game, Tim McCarver and I will select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 in the player's name to the Special Olympics. No clear-cut leader for that honor at the moment. Halfway through game two of the 1992 World Series, the Blue Jays and Braves tied at two. Tonight's game is being produced by Bob Dekas and directed by Joe Assetti. The Atlanta Braves coming up in the bottom of the fifth inning with the top of their order against David Cohn. Otis Nixon, Deion Sanders, and Terry Pendleton are due. David Cohn is referred to himself as a hired gun, a rent a pitcher, as Toronto acquired him in late, late August to try to solidify their pitching staff, heading down the home stretch of the race in the AL East as they held off the Orioles and Brewers. Toronto had to pick up $963,000 of Cone's $4.25 million salary for 1992. The rest of it paid by the New York Mets. So it cost Toronto approximately $240,000 for each of his wins. That's money well spent now that they're at the World Series for the first time. Otis Nixon. Fouled the first pitch away for strike one. Otis is 0 for 2 tonight. Of course, getting here is just part of what the Blue Jays set out to do at the beginning of the year. Interesting to see in the clubhouse before the game tonight, T-shirts being worn by several of the Blue Jays, including manager Cito Gaston that said three for three in 92. And that three for three referred to the championships of the American League East, the American League as a whole, and the World Series. They've accomplished two of them. And going for the third tonight as John Smoltz has somebody take the magic marker to the wrap around his wrist so it won't be a distraction to the Blue Jay hitters. Color me blue. We, we were kidding about that. What are you going to do? But speaking of blue, here's the T-shirt to which 
Sean referred. That is not a banner, that is a t-shirt. And the back of it, we can, we are, we will. And we'll see. Mm -hmm. Got him. Nixon frozen for the first out of the fifth, and that's just the second strikeout of the night for Cohn, who fanned 261 batters during the regular season. Leading the majors in strikeouts for the third consecutive year. And a slider that stays over the middle part of the plate. The last pitcher to lead the majors in three consecutive years, Nolan Ryan, back in 1972, three and four. More balls than strikes for Cohn. More ink on the wrist of Smoltz. Deion Sanders fly deep to right in the first, walked and stole second in the third. One ball on Neon Deion. Well hit to right. A base hit for Sanders. He's now seven. For 12 lifetime against David Cohn. We talked about the limp that Sanders had earlier. Remember, we said he had broken a bone back in March in spring training. It has not healed properly. And even with that limp, he stole second base the first time he was on first. And he's back to first on a quick throw by Cohn. The hits are even at four apiece. The line scores now identical. Two runs, four hits, and one error for each side. Pendleton at the plate with one out in the fifth. Out of play, third base side. One strike on Pendleton, who's one for two with an infield hit in the third. Sanders is back to first. Leon caught a little bit of his Florida State Seminoles in action yesterday over at Georgia Tech before he came to the ballpark for game one of the World Series. Sanders bluff towards second. They pitch out now throw to first and Dion is just back safely. The tag was in the middle of his body. But his hand was on the bag prior to the tag of Olaru. Think about all the action uh, that Sanders has gone through already tonight. This is a fake break, a pitch out by Borders, and the throw to Olaru not in time. I think it's worth remembering that Sanders only started two of his last 41 ball games that the Braves have played. And here he's been on base twice. And running, the pitch of ball, the throw, one hopper gets away from Lee. Sanders heads to third. And again, he's hobbling as he arrives at third base. Second stolen base of the night for Sanders. He takes third on the error charge to Pat Borders. Maybe it only hurts when he stops running. His second stolen base of the night, a bad pitch to handle for Borders, and an in-between hop off the wrist of Manny Lee, and Sanders is on third representing the go-ahead run. I would imagine it'll be an error on Pat Borders, the catcher. You are correct. Four stolen bases for the Braves tonight, one shy of the single game, one team record in World Series play. The infield in with a count two and one on Pendleton. Two and two now. We're in the fifth. The Blue Jays and Braves tied at two in game two of the World Series. Atlanta won game one last night, three to one. Time. Bones pitch 
out of play in left. The infield in with one out. A runner at third. We're in the fifth inning. The game tied at two and the count two and two on Pendleton. Terry Pendleton just a 200 hitter lifetime against David Cohn. He's eight for 40 in their one on one battles. Another 2 2 pitch. Fastball nearly grazed him. No way he gets another fastball here. Pendleton foul one back, the other inside. And Cohn will either go to the splitter or the slider. Slider. On the 3 2 pitch. Way outside, ball four. So that sets up the inning ending double play possibility. Cohn has already escaped two jams. By an inning ending double play. David Justice walked and scored the first run of the ball game in the second. He flied to right in the third. The infield has moved back for the Jays. They'll play for two to get out, get out of the inning unscathed. This is the type of situation that we were talking about last night. Toronto has only one effective reliever in the bullpen. That's a left handed pitcher. That's David Wells. He pitched in last night's game. But if Cito Gaston were thinking about taking David out of a game like this, he would want to go to a left-hander with Justice and Green back-to-back -back in a tie game. Because your game situation might be here in the fifth inning. There is no action in the Toronto pen at the moment, but that is about to change as they're scurrying around down there. First pitch, the ball low to Justice. Tough man to double up. Justice only bounced into one double play this year. He had 105 chances to do so. Time called. Pitching coach Galen Sisko was on his way to the mound, buying some time for the bullpen that just got started. The right hander Todd Stottlemyre, the lefty David Wells. Both Wells and Stottlemyre appeared in the game last night. And the trip to the mound right now by Galen Sisko, the pitching coach, has one intention. That's to give the guys in the bullpen a chance to warm up. Because if Justice were to walk and you have the bases loaded and one out, I think the left-hander would be brought into the game. Stottlemyre and Wells warming up under the watchful line. Bullpen coach John Sullivan, a longtime Toronto coach. Crowd growing a bit restless. And Mike Riley's going to break up the conversation. Galen Sisko pitched for the major leagues for the Red Sox, the Mets, and Kansas City. Back in the dugout with the count one of one and zero on Justice. One out, runners at first and third in a two-two ball game in the fifth inning. The shift is on for Justice. Three infielders on the right side. Two and all. Manuel Lee, the shortstop, pulled over to the right field side of the second base bag. The 2 0 pick. go back on top three to two Winfield juggled the ball a bit Sanders scored the throw comes all the way into the plate but Pendleton had stopped at third it's a base hit and an RBI for David Justice three two Atlanta even with the shift on David Justice pulls it so hard that it gets by Robbie Alomar. We talked about his range, but that ball was scalded to right field. 
And I think you're going to see the left-hander now, David Wells. At the very least, we will see a new pitcher because Cito Gaston is on his way to the mound. And it's the second trip of the inning. He has summoned David Wells, the lefty, with the left-handed hitting Sid Bream due up. 3-2 Braves back to Atlanta in a moment. You probably think the best American car value is some little econo box you have to settle for, right? Nope. It's a Buick. The luxurious Buick Park Avenue. That's according to the complete car cost guide. They calculated the five-year cost of depreciation, financing, insurance, fuel, maintenance, and repairs, and found that Park Avenue is the best American car value. For a free reprint from the complete car cost guide, call 1-800-4-A-Buick. We go through a lot of sheet metal. So I know a little something about replacement parts. Did you know that some insurance companies specify cheap imitation hoods, doors, and fenders for GM cars and trucks? It's true. And a lot of that cut rate stuff doesn't measure up to GM standards. Facts are all right here in this free brochure. So take some advice from a guy who's been through a fender or two. Ask to see your repair order before insurance work begins and insist on genuine GM parts. Answers that can improve your health. When CBS This Morning asked if vitamins are really good for you, we found that certain vitamins may prevent disease, while others can harm you, because what you know can make a difference. Your health on CBS This Morning with Harry Smith and Paula Zahn. It's breakfast for your head. CBS has the heat. An all-new season of quality drama. He's a witness. Carol O'Connor, Howard Rollins, in the heat of the night, premieres after the World Series. The best seat in the house belongs to the airship Shamu, gracefully floating 1,500 feet above Atlanta. More than 8,000 lights flash messages and animation on the side of the ship. And the Toronto Blue Jays will try to right their ship with the left-hander David Wells. He was in last night's ball game. He worked the eighth inning, walking one, striking out one, giving up no runs and no hits, and Bobby Cox has countered Cito Gaston's move. Now that Gaston has brought the lefty into the ball game, Cox is countered by calling Sid Bream back and sending Brian Hunter up to pinch hit. Hunter at 239 in the regular season with 14 home runs. 12 of those 14 homers came off left-handed pitchers. He had more home runs off southpaws than any other brave. He had two pinch hit home runs. He's batting with runners at first and third and one out. One run in, three to Atlanta in the fifth. And the first pitch of the night from Wells, a strike. In the mood of David Wells, this changed dramatically from the start of the ball game when he was showing his support for David Cohn with the cone head. The 0 1 to Hunter. Well hit to right field on the run. Winfield toward the line to make the running catch. Pendleton coming to the plate and he scores as the throw goes towards second. It's 4 to 2 Atlanta. The pinch hit RBI for Brian Hunter. Fine play by Winfield. Excellent hitting by Brian Hunter as Terry Pendleton scores without a play. Hey, Atlanta playing with so much confidence in these two games. You win a game like they did coming from behind on Wednesday night, scoring three runs in the bottom of the ninth inning. And you better have confidence. You have to have confidence when you win like that. You start to believe that you're a team of destiny. Right. 
Jeff Blauser looked at a ball low and away. He's the sixth batter of the inning, still just a runner at first now and two down. Blauser one for two, a single his last time up. Four to Atlanta. Blue Jays scored twice in the top of the inning. The Braves have matched the two in the bottom of the fifth. And the count two and zero oh on Blauser. Braves knocked David Cohn out of the ball game after four and a third. Check swing at a ball low and away. They appeal down to first. No swing, says Joe West. Three and all. He may be hitting here. Bowser with a home run off Doug Drabeck in the National League Championship Series. It's a good time to give him the green light. Looked like he had it. He started to pull the trigger, but thought better of it with the ball low and away. He walks on four pitches. The first walk thrown by Wells, the fifth issued by Toronto pitching tonight. Justice at second, Blauser at first, with two down in the fifth inning. 4 2 Atlanta. And the seventh batter of the inning is Damon Berryhill, who switches around to bat from the right side against Wells. Wells has asked Borders to come out to the mound. The crowd here at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium has watched Barry Hill come up in big situations all night. He came up with two men on in the second. The Braves wound up scoring on a wild pitch while he was at the play. He came up with two more men on in the fourth inning. And fly to right. He's up with two men on again. And he looked at a ball low and in, 1 and 0. Oh. Of course, Barry Hill batted with two men on in the sixth inning last night and hit the three run homer that was the difference in the 3 to 1. Braves game one win. He had a great year. Hitting from the right side in 1989, 340, but since then, he hasn't been able to find the stroke from the right side of the plate. Only one home run right handed this year. Wells, a big guy at 6'4, they list him at 225 pounds. Barry Hill with a pop up. One ball and one strike. <laughs> Some excitement, huh? Mm. I suppose that's appropriate for a fan of that age at 10:40 in the evening. The 1-1 one -one from Wells, chopped foul past Jimmy Williams in the third base coach's box. Jimmy, rumored to be one of the candidates for the Florida Marlins managing job, he's interviewed with them a couple of times. And as we mentioned earlier, Williams, a former manager of the Toronto Blue Jays, he took over when Bobby Cox returned to Atlanta to become the Braves' general manager. And Cito Gaston taking over for Jimmy Williams when Jimmy Williams was fired in 1989. The 1-2 to Perry Hill, chopped down the line, just foul. Interesting how quick everybody that we've talked to in a manager's uniform in the postseason has been to praise Jimmy Williams as one of the best third base coaches in the game today. Jim Leland, the Pittsburgh Pirate manager, said it during the playoffs. Bobby Cox, 
Williams manager has sung his third base coach's praises and Cito Gaston said it again before the game tonight. Yeah. And they go out of their way to praise the third base coach. He must really be doing a good job because most of the time he's like an umpire. You don't notice him that he's doing a good job but he's doing a good job and people are noticing. I'll tell you he is the manager on the field. Once the team is on the bases like in a situation like that it's his decision making process that can determine whether runs are scored or not. The one two pitch in the dirt and blocked by Borders. Two balls two strikes two outs. Two runs in here in the bottom of the fifth. And the Braves lead four to two. Justice the runner at second and Blouser at first. Wells working very slowly. The 2 2 pitch. He struck him out with the fastball over the inside part of the plate. That ends the inning. The Braves lead 4 2 and will return to Atlanta Fulton County Stadium after this word from your local station. Reggie Jackson gave us some lasting memories, but if you think he's just collecting cars now, think again. Back in the baseball business, Eye on America tomorrow on the CBS Evening News. Better up. Freeze! Baseball, according to the Hat Squad. Double play. He's caught. Gonna run down. Drop it. Wild pitch. Don't you just love baseball? The Hat Squad. These guys really play hardball. Wednesdays after baseball. I'm out. This is CBS. This sandwich is a real eye opener. A chicken breast, crispy on the outside, marinated so it's spicy on the inside. It's the new spicy, crispy chicken sandwich at Jack in the Box. Spicy. At most places, you can get a bite to eat for under a dollar. Trouble is, all you get is a bite. But at Jack in the Box, 99 cents gets you a delicious double cheeseburger. It's more than a bite. It's a banquet. most innovative design to come down the runway isn't in Paris. It's the new Pittsburgh International Airport, where every day, nearly 500 U.S. air flights come together at the world's most modern connecting terminal. If you think Paris is sophisticated, where well, do you see Pittsburgh? U.S. Air begins with you. Now, I've been to a few doctors in my time. It's like I'm sick. I feel bad. Can I get this little human sympathy here? And you don't want to go through a lot of rigmarole just to change doctors. Well, make it so guy that's not a brain surgeon understands You'd it. like to know up front, is this covered? Is this not covered? I'd say great. They realize my time is worth something. Too. I want to know that the care I'm getting is just as good as they're giving the person in the next room. They could just make those gowns come all the way together in the back. Jim Hill's Post Game Show, today. Welcome back to Game 2 of the World Series. After five innings, the Braves lead the Blue Jays 4-2. to two. And if you're a Brave fan, you have to feel pretty good about the fact that John Smoltz has the lead again with the way he has pitched throughout his career in the postseason. Especially uh, the postseason, the League Championship Series, the World Series, he had no decisions last year. He's 4-0 in the League Championship Series and trying not to squander this lead. Last year, two no decisions against Minnesota. Brian Hunter remains in the ball game at first base for the Braves. He came up as a pinch hitter in the bottom of the fifth. Joe Carter, the leadoff man in the sixth. Smoltz snapped off the breaking ball, lost his balance a bit as Carter took ball one. The big boppers in the middle of the order coming up for the Jays. Carter, Winfield, and Olderud batters three, four, and five. Joe's 0 for two tonight. Swing, it's a strike. Carter protested a strike call earlier tonight, and he's upset again. Oh, 
That is uh, when the wrap on the left wrist of John Smoltz was flesh colored and they put that ink on it a magic marker on that over that wristband. They wanted to peel down to first finally Mike Riley points down there and Joe West says it was not a strike two and two. Those two no decisions by the way that Smoltz had in last year's World Series came in games four and seven giving up only two runs in 14 and a third. Why did he pitch in game four. Well he was the one who shut out the Pittsburgh Pirates in game seven four to nothing to put the Braves in the series. Slicing toward the bullpen long run justice great effort he hustled all the way and went over the mound but couldn't get to it. When you speak of game four still a question mark as to who will be the starting pitcher for the Braves in game four. Cito Gaston has announced Jimmy Key will go for Toronto and in all likelihood it will be Tom Glavin in game four for Atlanta. Bobby Cox wants to wait until he has a chance to throw between starts and see how Glavin feels. Threw 126 pitches last night. But I'd bet after that performance last night it will be Tom Glavin. I would too. Bobby Cox telling us before the game that he doesn't get too wrapped up on pitch count. But he tries to blend in common sense and who the pitcher is. A power pitcher like John Smoltz needs the extra power, but Bobby said that he could probably throw 160, 170 pitches a game. A full count on Carter with Winfield on deck. That's ball four. The tying run will come to the plate in the person of Dave Winfield, who at age 41 seems to set a record every day. We asked him about it. If I didn't play well, I'd get sick and tired of people talking about, well, your age. But uh, now that they're saying, well, no man past 38 is hit for the cycle, no man over 40 is driven in 100. Hey, next year they'll be talking something else about age and accomplishment. God willing, I stay healthy, keep playing like I play, and playing a good team. And Dave alluded to the most well publicized of his accomplishments at age 40. The distinction of becoming the oldest player ever to drive in 100 runs in a season. He did that this year, with 108 runs batted in. At age 40, he was 40. For almost the entire year, turned 41 on the final weekend of the regular season, and was serenaded in a round of happy birthdays by the sellout crowd at the Sky Dome. He was born October 3rd, 1951, the same day that Bobby Thompson hit the home run off Ralph Branken. The ball and a strike on Winfield. He's 0 for 2 tonight. Carter at first and nobody out in the top of the sixth. The Braves lead four to two. Two balls and a strike. Dave Winfield has performed on the field but also off the field for the Blue Jays. He has become a tremendous force in the clubhouse and he said the two go hand in hand. If you're a new player but you don't produce on the field then the teammates aren't really going to respect what you have to say in the clubhouse. Nixon comes in now to make the catch. That's the fastball that we were talking about earlier when we mentioned Smoltz would come inside to Carter and Winfield. Usually if a player stands back away from the plate he likes the ball away. Dave Winfield in particular those long arms but this fastball just ties him up that ball really down the part of the plate but it was high enough and Dave did not hit it well at all but usually if you stand back away from the plate you like the ball away indicating you should be pitched inside. John Oldrude looked at a strike.
Olerud is 0 for 2 against John Smoltz tonight. Breaking ball missed. One and one. There is action in the Atlanta bullpen. Right-hander Pete Smith is throwing again. John Smoltz scheduled to bat second in the bottom of the sixth inning. This will be the 95th pitch of the night for Smoltz. And it's inside. Two balls and a strike. Whether he bats or not in the bottom of the sixth inning, I think, depends on what kind of inning he has. If he can get out with no runs and not throw a lot of pitches, I believe he'll be the batter. If not, we may see a pinch hitter. Ball three. As Bobby Cox said, common sense. Not only pitch count, but common baseball sense. A lot of people with common sense that don't have common baseball sense. To short and caught, they will double off Carter. Joe was caught in between, trying to judge if that ball would hit the ground or be caught in the air by Blouser. And the double play ends the inning. On to the bottom of the sixth, 4 2 Atlanta. When you compare Bravada's Smart Track to Explorer's four wheel drive, it's easy to see who's in control of the situation and who's slipping up. Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. Up a steep grade, under slippery conditions, the Oldsmobile Bravada can beat the Ford Explorer. Even with one boat tied behind its back. Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. Michelin's new all-season MX V4 for luxury performance tire with climate control. Autumn, a time when trees cast new colors, a time for sharing warmth. And at McDonald's, we're doing just that. Sharing the warmth of our new oven-baked apple pies, a cinnamon-dusted crust with golden, delicious apple filling. And now when you buy one, your local McDonald's donates 25 cents to Ronald McDonald Children's Charities who bring warmth and hope to kids everywhere. Try our new baked apple pie. It's a delicious way to warm your heart. Here comes Jim, in for a pit. Jim, backyard's next. Hey, no duels, non-alcohol, 70 calories, perfect. After all, the competition is pretty stiff out of here. When you want the refreshing taste of beer without the alcohol, think O'Doul's. It's what beer drinkers drink when they're not drinking beer. Monday. I'm 30 years old and a french fry could kill me. What's up with Miles' health? He's just sitting up there calculating his body fat. Murphy Brown, Monday. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Major League Baseball. Game two of the 1992 World Series. 4-2 Atlanta as the Braves come up in the sixth inning. Mark Lemke, one for two, he singled to drive in the second Atlanta run of the night in the fourth inning. He swings at the first pitch and lifts a lazy fly ball to center for the first out. Interesting, Tim, to see a couple of innings ago, Lemke have trouble getting the ball out of his glove on the play Devon White beat to first base because, as we saw before the game tonight, Lemke has a very small glove and it's certainly tattered and torn. I should say so. 
Matter of fact, the tears are at the base of the glove. Marcus had that, had that glove for six years, and it looks like it. If anything ever looks six years old, that thing does. The only thing that he has changed is the webbing in the glove. You can see that that is new, but it's amazing how small that glove is. It's tiny. And obviously, that small glove contributes to his quick release of mm -hmm. which you were speaking at the start of the ball game when Bobby Cox said Lemke and Bill Mazeroski are the two best he's ever seen among second basemen for getting rid of the ball. Mark says that before every game he constantly takes the ball out of the glove puts it back in takes it out he'll do that two three hundred times a day. Get used to the feel of taking it out of the mitt. And, uh, Bobby Cox astounding us comparing him with Mazeroski. Is tall company right there. About as tall as it gets. John Smoltz is 0 for 2. He has struck out and bounced into a double play. Facing David Wells with a count of 1 and 2. And Smoltz knew that he was out. The so second strikeout for David Wells, who has faced five batters since coming in in relief of David Cohn. All four runs scored by Atlanta charged to David Cohn. Otis Nixon batting for the first time tonight from the right side of the plate. He went 0 for 3 against Cone. Much better hitter right handed than left handed. With 343 during the regular season from the right side. Winfield in the foul territory to make a nice play. No problems for Dave Winfield in right field tonight. On to the seventh, 4 2 Atlanta. For those who thought full-size luxury car owners were taken for granted, change is in the wind. Introducing the all-new Cadillac Fleetwood Brougham. Totally redesigned to be the quietest Fleetwood ever, the most spacious, and the safest. With dual airbags and safety belts that provide supplemental protection for the people closest to you. The 1993 Cadillac Fleetwood Brougham. Changing the way you think about American automobiles. Darling, I need you so Never ever gonna let you go Cause I'm the one The one for you Hey, hey I'm the one Capture the ones you love one Without you. missing out on the fun yourself With a Sony Handycam America's most popular camcorder The affordable Canon CJ10. The power of color is yours. Get the power! Get color. 1988. We will be able to produce 30 million jobs in the next eight years. Under George Bush, more private sector jobs have been lost than have been created. And I am an environmentalist. The Sierra Club says Bush allowed his administration to, quote, gut clean air rules. I want to be the education president. George Bush tried to cut college aid for families making over 20000 a year. I want a kinder and gentler. Uh-uh. We can't afford four more years. CBS Sports coverage of Game 2 of the 1992 World Series is brought to you by the GM Card, the new financial vehicle. Miller Reserve, taste what barley does for beer. And by the Prudential, in a changing world, one thing remains rock solid. Welcome back to Atlanta Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta Georgia for game two of the 1992 World Series the Braves lead the World Series one game to none trying to take a two games to none lead with a four to two edge in game two as we go to the seventh inning Kelly Gruber leads off against John Smoltz and looks at strike one Sean McDonough along with Tim McCarver Jim Cotton and Pat O'Brien and Kelly Gruber trying to break out of an 0 for 20 postseason slump with a bunt try that comes over the screen. Gruber is 0 for 2 tonight. He has struck out and bounced the third. He'll be followed by Pat Borders and Manuel Lee. 
Batters six, seven, and eight for the Jays. I'm a little surprised that the bullpen is not active for the Blue Jays with the pitcher scheduled up fourth. As I just said that, someone is getting up in the Toronto bullpen. And the Braves bullpen is about to get started. Out in the Toronto pen, Todd Stottlemyre will begin warming up again. Ruber swung at a pitch way out of the strike zone. They throw it down to first for the out. And when you're struggling, you're struggling, and Kelly Gruber is really struggling. That pitch was nowhere near the strike zone. Atlanta scored first on the bottom of the second. David Justice scored on a David Cohn wild pitch. The Braves scored again in the fourth inning. A single to right by Mark Lemke brought in Sid Bream. Then David Cohn delivered his second hit of the night, a single to score Pat Borders. And we'll continue the recap of the scoring in a moment. First a swing and a foul tip by Borders. Devon White singled in Manuel Lee to tie the game at 2-2 halfway through. But Atlanta responded immediately. David Justice with a single to score Deion Sanders. Borders with a base hit. Sanders watches it go by to the wall. Borders on his way to second with a one-out double. Pat Borders continues to produce in the World Series for Toronto. He was two for three last night. He's one for two tonight. He walked earlier tonight and scored a run. Hanging curveball from John Smoltz. Ball scoots by Sanders. An easy double. It's got to be disturbing to Cito Gaston that in one plus games, this being, of course, the second game, that uh, David Cohn, the pitcher, has two hits. Pat Borders has three hits, and the rest of the team has four in these two ball games. That's when you know you're having problems scoring runs. The tying run at the plate, and Manuel Lee, who takes a fastball for a strike. And for those of you who joined this late, the only other run in this game for the moment scored on a sacrifice fly by Brian Hunter in the bottom of the fifth, that brought in Terry Pendleton to make it four to two. That's where we stand with one out on the top of the seventh. Borders at second. Very late swing at the fastball. 0 and 2 on lead. With Smoltz throwing as hard as he has been throwing, Deion Sanders in left field near the line. And could be a bit more shallow. Lee does not have power the other way as a left-hander. The off-speed pitch got it. So Smoltz struck out five over the first two innings. Then he did not record another strikeout until here in the seventh when he fanned Gruber to start the inning and now Lee for the second out. Smoltz is making some pitches, a wicked breaking ball to get Manny Lee. The pitcher Wells do up, but he has been called back, and Candy Maldonado is going to pinch hit. And he was the starting left fielder last night in game one for the Blue Jays and went over three with a pair of strikeouts against Tom Glavin. He's coming off a fine league championship series against Oakland in which he had two home runs. And he has nine career pinch hit homers. That's the most by any active player. Smoltz jammed him. Candy fought it off for strike one. Bobby Cox was talking before the game about how in the World Series last year Jack Morris seemed to get stronger as games went along could rear back for something extra in the late innings particularly in game seven of last year's World Series it seems as though that's what Smoltz is doing again here. Plenty on that one again a very late swing by Maldonado 0 and 2. Fastball from Smoltz at 91 miles per hour. Maldonado has never had a hit off John Smoltz. He's 0 for 7 a lifetime against the Atlanta right-hander. 4-2 Braves with a runner at second and two down in the Toronto seventh. That one bounced way out in front of the plate. And to third goes Pat Borders. On the second wild pitch of the night. 
thrown by John Smoltz. Damon Berryhill has no chance to come up with this one. I don't even think he touched the ball. It skips by him in the second wild pitch of the game by John Smoltz. Tell you, Sean, that the hitters will tell you, you know, they talk about the radar gun, 91 mile an hour fastballs. The hitters tell you how well you're throwing. Mm -hmm. If you get a strong hitter like Maldonado fouling the, fouling the ball off to the right side, the ball's on top of it. Now, those radar guns are okay when you're trying to rehab things, but look at the hitter pitcher relationship more than the speed of the ball. From the windup, the 1 2 pitch. Struck him out with a wicked breaking ball. Smoltz strikes out the side of the seventh. Seventh inning stretch in Atlanta, 4 2 Braves. Frederick Miller's finest beer called for the finest grain. A search that often led far afield. It's an idea whose time has come again. Introducing Miller Reserve, an all barley draft brewed in the classic tradition. Reserve and Reserve Light, taste what barley does for beer. There's a house whose rooms I know by heart where children grew up and I grew old. A house where I belong. At the Prudential, the terminally ill can collect their death benefit while they're alive, so they can afford to live out their days not in a hospital, but at home. There's a house where I belong. Hey, I thought you were a Honda for life guy, huh? What happened? Well, this happened. Oh, yeah? yeah? I love the way it drives. Handling, the control, it just feels really connected to the road. Even has anti-lock brakes standard. Oh, come on, what? You can't get ABS in the court, huh? Oh, yeah. For about 4,000 more. So what is this? The new Grand Am. It's a Pontiac. You're driving. Drive excitement. Pontiac. I'd love to drive it. I'll bet. Hey. Tire so special, it may last as long as you own your car, the XH4. Congratulations, it's a Michelin. Monday, special guest Adam Ant stumbles into Sicily, and guess who might never be the same? Uh, She's under some sort of spell. Uh, Northern Exposure, Monday. Uh, Ago, the seventh inning stretch enjoyed by Braves owner Ted Turner and his wife Jane Fonda. They enjoy what they see on the scoreboard as well. A 4 2 lead for the Braves as they come up in the bottom of the seventh against the third Toronto pitcher of the night, Todd Stottlemyre. Greeted by Deion Sanders. That was a swing with the body, but not with the bat. His body went around, but the bat didn't. <laughs> and as such, it's ruled ball one. Logan bat line drive handled by Lee. Sanders now one for three. And on this busy sports day, Terry Pendleton stands in. Did a pitch up in the strike zone. Pendleton, one for two, an infield hit. He walked and scored in the two run fifth, editing the difference in the ball game. Pendleton faced Stottlemyre last night and bounced to short. Todd worked one inning, a perfect one, two, three, seventh, including strikeouts of Nixon and Blauser.
Pendleton at the plate. Justice on deck. That's bounced. Foul past the first base bag. John Olerud plays with the batting helmet in the field because in 1989 he had surgery for the removal of a brain aneurysm and his father suggested that he wear the batting helmet in the field. Fortunately he hasn't any problems along those lines since then. Pretty good fastball and Pendleton fought it off to stay alive at one and two. There is action in the Toronto bullpen and interesting to see Jimmy Key warming up. He's scheduled to be the starting pitcher. In game four it's possible this is just a tune up prior to his start. Alomar throws Pendleton up. It's a chilly night here in Atlanta. The temperature continues to drop 54. And clear at the moment. We've had snow flurries in Toronto today, and the temperature 34 degrees. It's safe to say then that the roof will be closed on Tuesday night. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I did not pack my CBS Sports Parker. Justice packs a wallop to deep right center field. White on the warning track makes the catch. One, two, three, go the Braves. We head to the eighth with Atlanta on top, four to two. If you depend on your truck to last, here's news you should never forget. Of all the Chevy trucks built in the last 10 years, over 98% are still going strong. That's more than Ford, more than Toyota, more than Nissan. Over the years, no other truck is that dependable, foreign or domestic. Only Chevrolet, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. The Lone Ranger. Was that masked man who stopped the horses? I don't know, but he give me this. Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer battery. It keeps going and going and. How do you feel? I feel great. You feel terrible. Do you want to make some money? Okay. You feel terrible. The New York Times calls Night in the City a lively, gripping foray into the urban landscape. No can do. What's no can do? What's that, a Chinese appetizer? Not since Raging Bull has there been such a performance. This is it, man. Gritty, intense, powerhouse performances from De Niro and Lang. You want to kill me? I'll give a damn! Hungry, hungry. Night in the City. Rated R. Exclusive New York engagement now playing. Starts Friday everywhere. Storyboard Express wasn't saving what they'd hoped since leaving AT&T. Party Help is Catering was having trouble getting faxes through on the first try. So like thousands of other businesses, they've come back to AT&T. And we want you back. Switch now and we'll give you credit for one month of long distance. And we'll pay to switch you back if you're not completely satisfied. We want you back. Call 1-800-222-0400. This game summary is sponsored by Budweiser. Mark Lemke single scoring Sid Bream made it two to nothing for Atlanta in the fourth inning. The Blue Jays tied it with two runs with two outs in the fifth including an RBI single by David Cohn. But Atlanta answered immediately with two runs on two hits in its half of the fifth. And we still stand at four to two into the eighth inning. John Smoltz still on the mound facing the top of the order swing and a miss for strike one by Devon White. The hits even at five apiece. Smoltz struck out the side last inning. He has fanned eight tonight. He's thrown 112 pitches with this one, and he's still throwing hard, 0 2. Tommy Glavin with a complete game last night. If John Smoltz pitches a complete game victory tonight, it'll be the first time since 1965 that two complete game victories were pitched in the first and second game of the World Series. Who did it that year? Mudcat Grant beat Don Drysdale. 
And in the second game, Jim Cott beat Sandy Koufax. Not too shabby. Jim Cott? James Cott. James Lee Cott. What's he do now? There he is. Ah. Hi, Kitty. <laughs> it's living, isn't it? <laughs> See, for a guy who spent a lot of his life in Minnesota, he's awfully bundled up down there in a 54-degree night. That's complete game victories by the same team, of course. Yes, and obviously, indeed. if Smoltz win this, wins this game, it will be the second complete game victory for the Braves. White to center, the routine fly for Nixon. One out of the eighth inning. Airship Shamu is bringing us tonight's aerial shots of the contest between the Blue Jays and Braves. And a capacity crowd on hand, 51,763. The official attendance tonight for game two of the World Series. There's a base hit heading for the left field corner for Roberto Alomar. Sanders gets it back in, and Alomar stops at second with a one out double. So he has his first hit of the World Series. And once again, the tying run will come to the plate for the Blue Jays with the meat of the order coming up. Roberto Alomar, he is very difficult to defend from line to line, does he hit? As that double down the left field line shows. Once again, Bobby Cox, remember we talked about the pitch count and everything, showing common sense. He thinks John Smoltz still has good stuff, and he's going to allow him to pitch at least to Joe Carter. Carter, who homered last night. He's over two with a walk tonight. There's a high fly ball hooking foul. Carter got a big chunk of it, but it's well back into the stands and well foul in left. The Toronto Blue Jays have hit at least one home run in each of their seven postseason games this year. They have not hit one tonight. Smoltz working with a 4 to 2 lead in the eighth. Alomar at second with one out. The 0 1 pitch. Breaking ball. Swung on and missed. Carter will be followed by Dave Winfield. Up the middle, a base hit. Carter didn't hit hard, but he got it through. Alomar had to hold up to see if the ball would be caught. So he moves to third. Now the tying run is aboard at first, and the go-ahead run will come to the plate with Winfield to bat next. Joe Carter has to be so strong to hit a ball like that. It's almost like the bat bends. You can see Alomar realizing they trail by two runs and understanding that there's no way he can be doubled off at second base playing the passive brand of the game and just going to third. Not realizing whether that ball would have been caught or not. Interesting situation right here. But uh, so far Bobby Cox elects to stay with John Smoltz and you can't blame him. He's still throwing very very well. Well the hit by Alomar was an opposite field hit along the line and left and Carter's didn't have much on it but got through. But a lot of pitches in four postseason starts for John Smoltz. And not a lot of rest in between. Winfield says yeah he sure is throwing hard. Bob Gibson used to say about right handed hitters like that just think out there don't go out there. Alomar at third Carter at first 4 2 Atlanta in the top of the eighth inning one out one and oh the count on Winfield chop to the right side base hit past Lemke Alomar scores to make it four to three Carter on his way to third he is safe and it's a one run ball game. Dave Winfield with his first RBI in the World Series.
And an opposite field 38 hopper. Lemke can't get to it. Excellent base running by Joe Carter to go to third on the strong arm of David Justice. They're on their feet in Atlanta, and I would imagine they're on their feet in Toronto right now, too. Standing ovation for Smoltz as he departs. Winfield's first RBI in this World Series knocks him out. Winfield had only one RBI in the 81 World Series. We're back in a moment. Some people think he's a Superman, but when a 45-year-old has to throw 75 fastballs, even Nolan Ryan's muscles can ache. So after the game, it's the medicine doctors recommend most for sprains and strains, Advil. For me, it's a couple of Advil, and those muscle aches are long gone. And Advil's gentler on my stomach than aspirin. Today, it isn't aspirin or Tylenol acetaminophen. It's Advil. I feel ready to go another nine innings. Advil, tablets and caplets, advanced medicine for pain. How can Healthy Choice prepare a complete chicken parmesan at dinner that gives you less and more? By rewriting the entire recipe. Instead of simply giving you less fat, Healthy Choice selects more lean breast meat for more flavor. And there's not just less salt. Our sauce is brimming with luscious tomatoes, carefully seasoned with herbs and spices for more taste. Chicken parmesan at dinner from Healthy Choice. Never settle for less. There's a reason more people go to Sears for a new battery. Can't believe I left my lights on. Only Sears has the Die Hard. Sears is so confident of Die Hard starting power. If your Die Hard needs a jump, Sears will do it absolutely free. Anytime, anywhere, even if you leave your lights on. I got stranded once, never again. You can count on me. Sears Die Hard. More power when you need it most. Only Delta gives you more flights from over here to over there. Only Delta flies you nonstop to more cities from over here to over there. In fact, Only Delta flies you nonstop to more cities in Europe than all these airlines combined. Delta, we love to fly and it shows the world over. The blimp looking down on a thriller in game two of the 1992 World Series. The Blue Jays have scored a run here in the eighth inning to cut the lead to one for Atlanta. John Olerud at the plate with the tying run at third. The go-ahead run at first with one out in the eighth inning. Mike Stanton's first pitch is popped up. Terry Pendleton in. Two outs in the eighth inning. Before the game tonight, we specifically asked Cito Gaston that if Mike Stanton came in the game to pitch to John Olerud, would he leave Olerud in the game? He said, absolutely. And the reason why Olerud's batting average has a difference of only two points for his career versus right handers as compared to left handers. Olerud's at 270 against right handed pitchers and 268 against lefties. So there is virtually no difference. Stanton has never allowed a hit with a runner in scoring position in postseason competition as you saw they are 0 for 17 against him in this situation but he won't have a chance to continue that streak as Jeff Reardon will be the new pitcher when we come back. Cal crew painting wasn't saving what they'd hoped since leaving AT&T. Schoenstein pipe organ builders was having trouble getting long distance calls through on the first try. So like thousands of other businesses, they've come back to AT&T, and we want you back. Switch now, and we'll give you credit for one month of long distance. And we'll pay to switch you back if you're not completely satisfied. We want you back. Call 1-800-222-0400. Well, I do watch my figure. She's a beautiful girl. But fat-free cereal. Fat-free cereal? I'd rather eat regular cereal and just dance more. She's a beautiful dancer. Now this, crispy, simple, wonderful, probably loaded with fat. Kellogg's Corn Flakes have always been fat-free. Fat-free? Kellogg's Corn Flakes? You're not telling me the truth. Is he bothering you? 
Taste them again for the first time. Dear Ross, I was awarded this Purple Heart for wounds received during a Vietnam ambush. Over the years, its value to me has grown significantly. And like my family, it is priceless. I would be honored if you would accept the loan of my Purple Heart to keep with you throughout the campaign. I believe that it can serve as a compelling reminder that the hard battle ahead can and must be won. Let it also remind you of the army of ordinary citizens that is mustered to your call and looks to you to stop the hemorrhaging of the American spirit and to restore honesty, integrity, and responsibility to our government. Like you, I firmly believe that if we stand united, we will win. Good luck, Ross. Moments ago at the Blue Jay dugout, Kelly Gruber discussing the situation with Cito Gaston with hitting coach Larry Heisel on the right. Situation is simple. The tying run is at third. The go-ahead run at first with two outs in the eighth. Jeff Reardon's first pitch fouled straight back. But Bobby Cox in making the change of pitchers, playing the percentages and getting the right-handed Reardon on Gruber, a right-handed hitter. But Cox is undoubtedly aware of the numbers. Gruber, 6 for 12, lifetime against Reardon, including a home run. Plus, you're not seeing the Jeff Reardon uh, that the Blue Jays have been facing in past years. The all-time saves leader. But he is not the pitcher, obviously, that he was for the Boston Red Sox earlier, or the Minnesota Twins, or the Montreal Expos. And while he's had an up-and-down ride all season long, Stanton's been unhittable in postseason play. Kelly Gruber has been hitless in his last 21 postseason at bats. And in the hole here, one and two is Kelly Gruber. The fans try to help Reardon out of the jam. One run is scored for the Blue Jays in the eighth inning. 4 3 Atlanta. Toronto with runners at first and third and two outs. Borderline pitch at best on the inside corner, and Gruber can't believe it. Gruber thought the ball was inside. Could have been. But Reardon gets the call, and Atlanta maintains the lead. And Gruber now shares the all-time record for consecutive hitless at bats in a single postseason. 22. Back in a moment. In the beginning, there was only one vehicle of its kind. Today, it's the only one to combine a lease this powerful with one this secure, this comfortable, and this affordable. The extraordinary Chevy S Blazer lease plan from the extraordinary vehicle that originated this species, Chevy Blazer. There are lots of firsts in life where First Interstate Bank just can't help you. But there are firsts where First Interstate can be a big help, like helping you fulfill a dream. Then we'll do everything possible to make it come true. And because there's so many times when no one can help you, when it comes to banking, come to First Interstate Bank and we'll go out of our way to help you, as long as we can. If you like spicy chicken, Dave Thomas's new spicy chicken filet sandwich at Wendy's is hard to resist. Dave, spicy? That's intriguing. Try Wendy's new spicy chicken filet sandwich today. When you're hot, you're hot. Imagine a rent-a-car company that offers special delivery right to your door. That's Enterprise. Here, let me help you. Enterprise, a special rent-a-car company that gives you special delivery. In Frederick Miller's day, the brewery made a special beer and held it in reserve for special occasions. It's an idea whose time has come again. Introducing Miller Reserve, an all barley draft brewed in the classic tradition. Reserve and reserve light. Taste what barley does for beer.
you can see Damon Barry held the catcher set up curve ball outside rarely will a catcher get a called strike on a breaking ball when he has to cross the plate to catch it but they got it there that clearly a mistake by Reardon that he got away with that ball went around the plate it looked like Gruber said Brian Hunter batting against the new Toronto hurler the fourth pitcher of the night for the Jays Dwayne Ward Hunter came up as a pinch hitter for Sid Bream and delivered a sacrifice fly to drive in a run in the fifth. Ward, a native of New Mexico and the former Atlanta Brave, we mentioned his track record. He went to Toronto in a deal for Doyle Alexander. And Alexander left to Detroit in the deal that brought John Smoltz to the Brave. That's a strike, says Joe West. Hunter, Blouser, and Barry Hill. Due up in the bottom of the eighth inning. Atlanta holding on to a one run lead, four to three. The Braves have been out hit eight to five. That's a smash. Gruber continues to play excellent defense. One out in the eighth inning. Brian Hunter not fooled a bit on this fastball. This ball is ripped to third. In between hops, smothered by Gruber. Nice play. Interesting what Cito Gaston said to us before the game. Oftentimes Gruber will field balls like that and not look the ball into his glove. His head will snap up and yet he still makes the play and it looked like that time that might have been the case. Well you don't have a chance on a ball hit that hard to mm -hmm. look it into your glove. <laughs> ball tipped in the middle of borders. One and one on Blousey. Ball hit that hard you're just trying to defend yourself. <laughs> Blouser is singled and walked after reaching on a fielder's choice and stealing second back in the second. He chased a ball out of the strike zone one and two. Jeff Reardon likely to come on in the ninth inning at least to start the inning although Mark Wohlers is warming up. Bottom third of the Toronto order is due in the ninth at Borders. Manuel Lee and then the pitcher. There's Wollers, the hard throwing right hander. The 2 2 from Dwayne Ward. Ooh. He throws hard, and that was some loud chin music. Does not happen to be the tune that Jeff Blauser likes. Mm. Blauser and Dwayne Ward's teammates in the minor leagues for the Braves. Not a nice way to treat your teammate. Blauser no. strikes out for the second. Out of the inning and the first strikeout of the night for Dwayne Ward. Mike Timlin is warming up in the Blue Jay bullpen. Well, the relief pitching tonight of Wells, Stottlemyre, and Ward has been outstanding. As a matter of fact, they have not surrendered a hit. And Stottlemyre and Wells did not surrender a hit in last night's game. Each of them working one inning. Damon Berry Hill up there with a count of a ball and a strike. He's over two with a walk in his first at bat this evening. Two outs in the bottom of the eighth. The Braves lead four to three. A ball and two strikes on the Atlanta catcher. Ward working quickly and Barry Hill laid off the ball low and in. Blue Jays have about as good a 
setup man and closer combination as you can have in Major League Baseball with Ward setting up Henke so well all year long. And he blew away Barry Hill. Two strikeouts in the inning. One, two, three, go the Braves. We go to the ninth. Borders Lee and Ward do up. Atlanta leads by a run. Like a run. I got an 88 Chevrolet Silverado with 304,000 miles. I drive it to work 125 miles one way to work. 304,000 miles, still rolling. This is the 1986 Chevrolet Scottsdale. Truck has now 577,000 miles on it. It always gave me my dollar when I needed my dollar. Chevrolet, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Keep tires on it, keep gas in it, it'll go. Introducing the Goodyear Buy Three, Get the Fourth Tire Free Sale. Buy three Goodyear all-season radials, and you'll get the fourth tire free. Come on in before they all disappear. There is a sound that you can expect to hear in the triangle below Canal Street. It's the sound of German being spoken by those who make the art and those who are awed by it. Bex, the number one imported German beer in Tribeca, America, and the world. I feel fantastic. For 40 years, I've been eating grape nuts and feeling great. Why does John Flays love grape nuts so much? If you eat something like grape nuts that is fat-free, I feel good. Grape nuts, the fat-free natural energy source. I'm talking about a natural energy that stays with you all morning. I love the taste of grape nuts, and I like the texture of it. Trying other cereals brings me right back to grape nuts. Breakfast with post-grape nut cereal helps keep you going strong all morning long. Take a week, try them. I know you're going to like them. Good news for people taking Cardism SR. I need a refill on my Cardism SR. You may want to see your doctor before your next refill, because there's another Cardism available, Cardism CD. What's the difference? Cardism CD should save you money. Can you give me Cardism CD? Only your doctor can change your prescription. Ask your doctor if Cardism CD is right for you. Cardism CD. Thanks. I'll ask my doctor. The Braves four, the Blue Jays three as we go to the top of the ninth. Toronto with the bottom third of its order coming up. Borders, Lee, and Cole, or rather uh, the pitcher Ward scheduled for Cito Gaston. And there's what Cito has available on his bench as potential pinch hitters. He already has sent Derek Bell into the on-deck circle as Borders lines one to right. And Justice is there, one pitch and one out. Rafael Belliard is into the ball game for Atlanta at shortstop as they shore up their defense. Braves trying to take a two games to none advantage in the 1992 World Series. With Manuel Lee due, Derek Bell is the pinch hitter. Lee went one for three tonight with a single and a run scored. Bell hit 242 during the regular season with two homers and 15 runs batted in in 61 games. Reardon with a fastball that just missed outside. Ed Sprague has moved into the on-deck circle to bat for the pitcher Ward. One ball and one strike. Jeff Reardon, Major League Baseball's all-time save leader, facing a man who hasn't appeared much in the postseason. Bell got into only two games without an official at bat in the LCS against Oakland. Reardon, at age 37, the oldest Brave, pitching in the postseason for his fourth team. Bell shoots it back in our direction. That ball was hittable there. He missed that pitch. Two balls and two strikes. The only appearance of Derek Bell in the ALCS was as a pinch runner. And as you saw, he didn't even pinch hit much during the regular season. That's out of play. First base side, still two and two. 
by pitching in the postseason for four different teams Montreal Minnesota Boston and now Atlanta Jeff Reardon has tied Doyle Alexander's major league record postseason appearances with the most teams. Pitch that was very close. It has certainly been an eventful night for home plate umpire Mike Riley. Now the payoff pitch. Fouled away. Another one just missed. When a hitter is on a pitch like that, they foul it straight back. So Derek Bell has just missed two fastballs from Reardon. Ball four, low and away. Reardon went to the fastball and missed. And now the tying run is aboard at first base with one out in the top of the ninth inning. Bell with decent speed, seven stolen bases and only 61 games during the regular season. And now Ed Sprague to bat for the pitcher Ward. He was one for two with a single in the league championship series against Oakland. Both of his at bats in the playoffs were as a pinch hitter. Well hit to left field. To the wall, Deion Sanders. Home run, Ed Sprague. Off the bench with a pinch hit two run homer off Jeff Reardon to give the Toronto Blue Jays a five to four lead. Homer for the Blue Jays this year. And is it ever a big one? Wow. What a great moment for Ed Sprague as Devon White turned the bun and took a ball. Ed Sprague was involved in somewhat of a controversy this summer. As White bounces one down to first, Hunter slip, but gets the tag on White. Ed Sprague's wife, Kristen Babb Sprague, won a gold medal at the Summer Olympics in solo synchronized swimming. Obviously, it was a great moment for him. Unfortunately, she won the gold medal because of a judging error made by a judge from Brazil involving a competitor from Canada. Sylvie Frechette had the mistake in the judging not been made and the wrong score not punched in Sylvie Brichette of Canada would have won the gold medal but the mistake was made they could not correct it and Ed Sprague's wife won the gold medal and that was a source of some controversy in Canada there was no error in judgment on that home run clearly out of the ballpark what a big moment in that young man's life his dad a pitcher for Oakland Cincinnati St. Louis and Milwaukee. And certainly every Canadian is happy for Ed Sprague tonight. 5 4. Toronto has the lead for the first time tonight. We mentioned Ed Sprague, senior. He was on the Reds roster in 1972, but did not play in the World Series. Alomar pops up a bunt try. Lemke fields it. And that ends the inning. But the two run homer by Sprague has given Toronto the lead. Lemke, the pitcher, and Nixon do up for Atlanta in the bottom of the ninth. I don't remember. It was something, something. The Nicoderm patch. Nicotine transdermal system. Yeah, it's called Nicoderm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the patch. Right, it's a patch. Nicoderm. A lot of people don't know about it. You know, maybe I'll ask my doctor. Nicoderm. It's a patch, huh? Yeah. It's a patch. Nicoderm. Derm. Derm. By prescription only. Some grown-up advice about breakfast. I don't care what your friends do. Eat. 
What's your hurry? You're not leaving this house. For all you adults who rush out without breakfast, why not try something new? Two words. Blueberry. The luscious new taste of Kellogg's Blueberry Pop-Tarts. Blueberries are our friends. With bigger, better blueberry flavor bursting in every bite. It's rectangular. They weren't kidding. They're good. The new taste of Kellogg's Blueberry Pop-Tarts. Real good, real fast. Like that. Someday you'll thank me. Wendy's spicy chicken. Yeah, it's different. Because Dave's different. He's a rebel. They zig, he zag. Wendy's new spicy chicken filet sandwich is a whole breast that's specially seasoned with Dave's own blend of pepper and spices. Dave, spicy? That's intriguing. What can I say? When you're hot, you're hot. Wendy's spicy chicken filet sandwich. It's caused quite a stir. A man his age shouldn't be making spicy food. Amen. To all those who have made CBS America's most watched network, we say thank you. To all those who have made CBS America's most honored network, we say thank you. And to all those who are still searching for a network to call home, we say you're welcome. In the center of your screen, Kristen Babb Sprague, gold medalist at the Summer Olympics for the United States in synchronized swimming, and tonight the very proud wife of Ed Sprague. She's been wiping away tears as we watched her during the break between innings. Sprague's pinch hit two run homer has given Toronto a 5 to 4 lead. As we go to the bottom of the ninth with Tom Hankey on, the closer of the Blue Jays trying to save it. Mark Lemke to lead off. Then the pitchers do. The on deck circle is empty at the moment. Lemke one for three with an RBI single tonight. Hankey's first pitch is strike. In postseason play, Tom Hickey is 2-0 with three saves and a 1.65 earned run average. And encompasses all of his postseason experience, and you saw his numbers from this year's league championship series against Oakland. He is quickly ahead of Lemke 0-2. Alfredo Griffin is into the ball game at shortstop. They pinch hit for Manuel Lee in the top of the ninth. In the dirt. This is what Bobby Cox has available to him on the bench, and he has already sent Lonnie Smith into the on deck circle to bat for the pitcher, Jeff Reardon. There's Smith. Two and two. Ed Sprague still in the dugout. He wants to make sure it was a game winning home run. <laughs> His heart must still be pounding. Oh, man. Mm. He hit only one home run. During the regular season, he only appeared in 22 games. Just as Cabrera was an unlikely hero in Game 7 of the playoffs for Atlanta, Sprague, an unlikely hero at the moment for Toronto, but they still must survive the bottom of the ninth. Lemke has battled off the 0-2 hook to a full count. Reardon played by long balls in the last couple of years of his career, and again tonight, Lemke bounced that one foul. That home run by Ed Sprague was only the second home run in postseason play. The only, only the second pinch hit home run in postseason play to take a team from losing to winning. The other one in the 1988 World Series game one. Dennis Eckersley giving up the two run homer to Kirk Gibson to win it for the Dodgers. Lemke a shallow fly ball to left for Joe Carter. One out. And if the Blue Jays hang on and win this one, the performance of the bullpen tonight should not be overlooked. David Wells pitched an inning and two thirds without allowing a hit or a run. Todd Stottlemyre pitched one perfect inning. Dwayne Ward one perfect inning. And now Henke has retired the first batter he has faced. The last hit for the Braves came off David Cohn back in the fifth inning. David Justice 
with the RBI single for Bobby Cox. Cox has Lonnie Smith at the plate. Smith appeared six times in the playoffs against Pittsburgh. All six at bats as a pinch hitter, and he was two for six. He hasn't put the ball in play in three career at bats against Hanky. Well hit, but well fouled down in the Toronto bullpen. Not too many right handed batters put the ball in play and hit it hard against Hickey. Only one hit in the last 28 at bats for right handed batters in postseason play against Tom Hickey. 5 4 Toronto with one out of the bases empty in the ninth, and that hit Lonnie Smith. The fans boo, but certainly that's the last thing Tom Hickey wanted to do is put the potential tying run on base and bring the winning run to the plate. Tom Hankey did not hit a single batter during the regular season. Ron Gant comes in to run for Lonnie Smith. And the plot thickens. Ron Gant with nine consecutive stolen bases in postseason play make that 10 with a stolen base last night for game he's at first with one out in the bottom of the ninth. five four Toronto and the batter Otis Nixon who is 0 for four in this ball game if you run Gann at first base and you're thinking about running and you got to assume that he is then you want to pick a split finger fastball on which to run so unusually I would imagine he will wait for Nixon to get in the hole either 01 02 1 2 or run on the first pitch. The first pitch is slapped to center field and Devon White makes the catch two away in the ninth inning. James. One out away from evening the series and one apiece. Jane Fonda hoping for divine intervention for the Braves. They've already had one miracle this week. Wouldn't you know that Deion Sanders would come up? What it means most. He's one for three tonight. He singled and scored in the fifth inning. He's also walked and stolen two bases tonight. Gant the pinch runner at first. Two outs, bottom of the ninth, 5 4 Toronto. And as Hanky eyed Ron Gant at first base, Sanders backed out. Olderud is holding Gant on, and at the other corner, Kelly Gruber is all over. The third base line. Prevent a ball being hit down to the left field corner. the end of the bat a cue shot toward the Toronto dugout it's one ball and one strike certainly a tough task for Sanders he's been dividing his time the last couple of months between football and baseball and as a result tonight's start is just his third for Bobby Cox in the last 42 Braves games he hasn't had many swings lately period but particularly not against the 95 mile an hour type fastballs of a pitcher like Hanky. The 
and one pitch. Chopped foul. And now the Braves are down to their final strike in game two. I think you can look for Gant to be running here. There is a reluctance to run when if you're thrown out, that's the last out. I think that's the reason that Gann hasn't tried to steal up to this point. Over the count one and two, if I'm Bobby Cox, I send him right now. Will Hanky come with a fastball or fork ball? It was the fork ball, and Sanders got a piece of it to stay alive at one and two. <laughs> Toronto five, Atlanta four. Two outs. Ron Gant, the runner at first, in the bottom of the ninth. And he draws a throw. Most incredible silence here at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium in anticipation of the one two pitch here it is and again Sanders just got it off the end of the bat toward the Blue Jay dugout to stay alive he has fouled off some very very difficult splitters from Tom Hinkey and he'll probably get another one. Two pitch. Low and in. Two balls and two strikes. If Sanders can keep the Braves alive, Terry Pendleton would bat next. Two two pitch slapped away. And Dion has managed to get a piece of the fourth ball and the good fastball from Hankey. This will be the eighth pitch to Dion Sanders with Gant running. It's ball three. Borders did not attempt to throw to second with the ball in the dirt. So now the tying run is in scoring position with two outs, and Sanders has battled to a full count. Now Kelly Gruber, who was on the line, gets off the line because a base hit ties the score. You don't want to protect against a double in this situation. Olerud is more on the line. He should be toward the fatter part of the field. Gruber is toward the fatter part of the field, moved off the line. There's no sense in protecting against a double here. With that stolen base, the Braves have tied a World Series record. Five stolen bases by one team in a nine-inning game. And now they'll talk it over with the ninth pitch up coming to Deion Sanders. Because if Hinky retires Sanders, there will be five stolen bases in a losing effort. I think I would rather challenge Deion Sanders than Terry Pendleton. at bat by Deion Sanders. This pitch pitch just missing low. The splitter. And now Terry Pendleton's up there. Much more experience. And remember, he led the National League 
in hits with runners in scoring position this year. A 387 batting average. And here it is. Led all the major leagues did Pendleton. Lou Whitaker of Detroit was second, and the Blue Jays, Roberto Alomar, fourth. So Pendleton will come up with the tying run at second, the winning run at first, at excellent speed on the base paths, with Gant, the runner at second, and Sanders at first. Neil and Cisco out to the mound. Certainly, the Blue Jays will sink or swim here in the bottom of the ninth with Tom Hankey. What makes Pendleton so difficult in these situations is his ability to hit any pitch. He can dig a ball off the ground. He can hammer it home and high, outside, inside. Great plate coverage for a little man. Toronto leads five to four. They took the lead on a pinch hit two run homer in the top of the ninth by Ed Spray. First and second with two down for Atlanta in the bottom of the ninth, and Pendleton with a little pop up. Kelly Gruber in the foul ground. He has it. And the Blue Jays have even this series at one win apiece. Ed Sprague, the unlikely hero tonight. His wife won a gold medal earlier this summer. And tonight, Ed Sprague won over the hearts of every Canadian. The final score in game two of the World Series. The Blue Jays five, the Braves four. We'll come back. Interviews with Pat O'Brien and Jim Cott in just a moment. I'll get the cereal, honey. Morning. You'll love this cereal. Where'd you come from? A different time when grains were kept whole for the natural hearty taste. Great grains. Toasted wheat, oats, and barley. Kept whole. Full of flavor. Pecans, dates, raisins. Enjoy it with the missus. Thanks. Mmm, great. Where'd you get this? <laughs> Mind if I tell her? What was great back then is great grains now. A great cereal from Post. Who says there are no heroes? What about the guy who treats a fender like modern art? And all the ones who never call the game on account of weather? There are people who make things perfect a thousand times a day. And if Bank of America can help with the money, keep things safe, save them some time, then they can go on doing the really important things. Banking on America. Bank of America. You know where I'm going tomorrow? Where? I'm flying all the way to Asia. Can my plane fly there? Well, maybe if you throw it real hard, it just might. When you have business on the other side of the world, choose the airline that just cut up to three hours off your travel time to cities throughout Asia. With service to more Asian cities than any other U.S. airline, Northwest Airlines, the leading airline to Asia. Some people just know how to fly. Fly ball. Basketball. Dead ball. Don't you just love baseball? The Hat Squad, Wednesdays. Pat O'Brien back at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. Kelly Gruber with the final, R, final out and a chop, chop, chop. Almost I told you so motion there to the Atlanta Braves fans. And the fans are stunned here as they exit for the parking lot in a thriller. They lose to Toronto. Toronto's obviously first World Series win. Atlanta's first loss here in Atlanta, 5-4, to four, the final score. And our MVP of the game, of course, is Ed Sprague, who began the season as a triple-A ball player in Syracuse. And he's standing by right now uh, with Kitty Cobb. But before we do that, let's say that Chevrolet will donate $1,000 in his behalf to the Special Olympics. And we got that out of the way. Let's get on to Kitty and Mr. Sprague, fellas. The bench tonight. And swung at that first pitch like you said. I know I'm going to get a fastball. I'm going to rip at it the first one I see. I was watching. You can't hear this. That first pitch, the right-handers, and he'd been he'd been coming out with a fastball, and then once he got ahead, he'd, you know, he'd go to the slider. So I just said, uh, Lawrence Mullenix made he just told me, hey, make sure he gets the fastball down to you. And I just said, uh, look for something I can stay over. 
Is that what you guys do on the bench? I know you have your the trench patrol or whatever it is with you and Derek Bell. So you you look Don't forward to reward. Yeah, <laughs> you look forward to times like that when you have to go up and swing the bat. Well, that's what we're here for. You know, someone's got to play our role. And uh, you know, Derek had a big at bat getting the walk. He battled off some tough pitches, and he gets on and uh, you know gives me a chance to do something. I was just looking for a ball to drive. This seems to be a different Toronto team from what I've seen in the past. You you fellas have not been swept in a series all year, but. Even in games like this late where you're behind, there is a certain confidence about this team. Yeah, well, you know, we came from behind off accuracy, and I think that really built our confidence, especially in postseason play. We hadn't played real well in the past. But, uh, you know, this team, with the bats that we got with Robbie and, and Devo and Joe and some guys that can run, you're never really out of it. You know, you get a guy on, he can steal. And if you're, you know, you got a chance and you get uh, Joe and Dave up in situations where they hit the ball in the ballpark, uh, you know, you're really not out of any games. All right, let's take a look at that. Uh, Home run that Ed Sprague hit right now. Low fastball that he got from Jeff Reardon. And uh, even though we're not getting a first-hand look at it right here, you can remember vividly. And uh, what what a night for the, what a year really for the Sprague family with your wife winning a, a gold medal. Yeah, you know, I'm real proud of her. She did a great job. Uh, you know, she was kind of the underdog when she went over there. And, and she, uh, you know, she proved everybody wrong. And, and uh, she had a great swim, and you know I'm really happy for her. And it was her time, and now she's retired. And uh, now it's your time. <laughs> now it's mine. Right, and the Blue Jays' time. They go home tied at one. Let's go back to Pat O'Brien. A gold medal for his wife, and a golden moment for him. Once again, the final score of the game, uh, game, game two. Toronto Blue Jays five, the Atlanta Braves four. Join us again on Tuesday night at eight o'clock Eastern time for Game Three of the World Series from Sky Dome in Toronto. Steve Avery will take the mound for Atlanta. Toronto will counter with Juan Guzman. CBS Sports coverage of Game 2 of the 1992 World Series is brought to you by Mary and Merrill Dow Incorporated, makers of the new Cardism CD, new Great Grain Cereal from Post, and by the Heartbeat of America, Chevrolet, and your local Chevy dealer. been watching the 1992 World Series on CBS Sports. This almost became the night that they put the Rob back into Roberto. Instead, an obscure catcher is a hero, obscure no more. Oh, Canada, here we come, not of that one. These unofficial moments in our national pastime are brought to you by the official airline of Major League Baseball. United, come fly the friendly skies. <laughs>